Hello everyone, welcome to Prague. <laughs> talking Prague. Welcome to Talking Prague. Prague. I am joined here with good Ryan and Thiago. Um, hey guys. You so, can find uh, Ryan's YouTube channel in the description and uh, and Instagram and Instagram and Thiago's whatever he wants to put. <laughs> oh, thank you, Zoltan. <laughs> Thanks for the look at. Thanks for shouting on my YouTube page, my band's YouTube page, and our Instagram page. Oh yeah, that's right. Moth Troopers page. Oh no, Moth Troopers page has to be in the description. Yeah, we we got it all. We got it all here. We are talking all Prague. All so right. we all welcome you to Talking Prague. Let's get this started. Go. All right. So our starting subject is Brian. The future of Prague. Okay, Where is it going? The future of What's Prague. the current status? What are we excited? What are we not excited about? You yeah. Know, yeah. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Who wants to start this topic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think we should start off with Thiago. Let's uh, give him a let's give him well, a, I'm a good man. since we disrespected him earlier. Since you guys totally, totally <laughs> slighted me in this interview, and the other one we, <laughs> but all right, yeah. I'll start. Okay, I will say the same thing. I always thought and talked to you guys about that. I think the flagship band right now could be others involved as well. Of course, I'm not just going to pin them down. Yeah. But for me personally, I think you guys agree. The future of progressive music or progressive rock and metal in general, as of now, in the modern age, yeah. is probably being, I'd say, pushed further by hacking. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Right. You I would know, agree. They're combining so many elements that was kind of like left out. Now it's to make a resurgence in Prague, but right. rejuvenated, for example. They took the old, like, King Crimson, Melancholic stuff, like in the Al Mountain album. And then you have the Gentle Giant quirkiness, you know, yeah. in um, uh, Cockroach King. Mm -hmm. That basic combine of seven string, eight string, you know, the Genty technique. Uh, then you have the more synth pop stuff that was, like, done by Rush and other bands like Philippe Winsreich, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, where it hands, like, Endless Knot, Nil by Mouth. Uh, 1985. So they introduced, they actually went the route that I wish the whistle went, went the pop stuff, to be honest with you, the same psychedelic synth wave, uh, cyberpunk elements of music, right? Right. And, but within all that, there's still pretty much a metal, progressive rock, progressive metal band that is reintroducing and renewing the genre. Yeah. And extending the arrangements to modern metal. Right, not oh, yeah, something sure. just yeah. It's not just something more like okay, we stuck to six string and we're gonna down to no. It's flat out like you you can hear stuff like animals as leaders would do, but it's more digestible. In my opinion. Of course, yeah. Of course. So what, what I think about this is that people early on were comparing them to Dream Theater. They were the Dream yeah. Theater clone band, they but were. I really think they've come into their own because they they've added all this older prog influence that was absent in. in uh, in Dream Theater's music with the Gentle Giant Harmonies, as you said, Thiago. Um, I believe they have used Mellotrons occasionally, here and there, yeah. even. Um, yeah, and they, they bring all that that older influence, but they also bring all the gent influence from bands like Periphery and Meshuga and Animals as Leaders, and they put it all in there. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, they put it all in there, and... Uh, We've it's it's a really new, cool, innovative, modern sound that I think Prague needed, and I think their new album is going to be great. I really love the new single "Invasion." I really loved "Canary Yellow." Prosthetic was cool, probably my least favorite of the singles, but I agreed. I'm really hyped for the album. I really like what I'm hearing so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so um, if I may go ahead and um, bring my own thoughts into this now, um, for sure. Hacken is a very respectable modern prog band, but I think that we're missing a few. Caligula's oh, yeah. Horse. Caligula's Horse. That new um, album, though. That, yeah, the new old they uh, Caligula's struggled. Horse. They struggled. They, they did. They hit it right, you know, and the, uh, they, they nailed it, you know. They hit the nail album. on the head with that album. And That's I what I meant to they, say. Uh, they but really, really did a really good job on that album, and the production was unbelievable. The production um, was great. The guitar tone. Oh the yeah. Playing on that album was just phenomenal. The singing. Oh, yeah. The arrangements. Everything was perfect. 
my favorite album of the year so far and i think it's yeah. probably going to stay that way because i'm not really hyped about many other releases this year mm-hmm. um i think that a few other ones that we have to discuss are um and actually riverside, uh, riverside uh well, yeah I guess riverside's been around that. for riverside's longer than been we, around and we give them credit for, they've been around for almost 20 years almost 20 years yeah, yeah. That, uh, I that think would... that their best works are behind them. Or I think a band like Caligula's Horse, 2020 would be here. They are... released their yeah. magnum opus this year. Whereas I think Riverside still keeps releasing albums, but they're not going to release another Second Life Syndrome, in my opinion. I think that this uh, new album that they're releasing this year could be their uh, could be an amazing change for them because they have a new no, member no. in the band. And I mean, according to uh, Marius Duda, he's... Uh, He's bringing in a new energy, which would really help Riverside get back that lost pride that they that they fell that fell in their uh, album called Wasteland that was released in 2018. Yeah. I think that another band that has recently struck in the progressive rock scene, and I am praising them now, even though they've been around for a while, and I know that they've um, they've made progressive death metal in the past. Is um uh um Catatonia with their uh, I love Catatonia. They've uh they've released this new album. I can't remember what it was called, but it was released in 2016, and it was definitely a fantastic release by them. It was their more mature sound. They I'm slipping. I'm falling down. <laughs> yep. Okay, we fell. Um, I th- <laughs> be a professional, Thiago. <laughs> I know it's just this thing. It skips slipping. I, I have to look it from the. Yeah. 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 Um, their newest releases have been an advancement on the progressive rock sound. Definitely. I think that Definitely. They I can't are... opinion it. I have not listened haven't to it yet. Them yet. <laughs> I haven't heard them yet, but I've, I've heard good things. Yeah. Um, another oh. one that should be praised as a modern prog album that I think fits of the mm. last of the last ten years. Um, for sure, it has to be Pale Communion. Yeah, I think Pale Communion was probably the best of that era of Opet's albums. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. the melodic yeah. prog side, that or Damnation. But again, Opet's a band that's been around forever. They're, they're oh yeah, of on. course. I, I think their f- debut came out like like twenty six years ago. So mm-hmm. Opet, they're they're an old band. They keep doing good things. I like the new album. But that's another band, you know, if we can throw Opeth in there, we can throw Dream Theater in there. And those are two bands that I don't think are really all that new. Well, no. It's, it's like this, though. I know it's the way I think. Like, Opeth, when it comes to the prog genre, there are bands that, like Dream Theater, Opeth, um, even the deceased, Rest in Peace, Porcupine Tree, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, they are bands that don't need to prove anything or do anything else. To be honest, yeah, of course. It's not like they already been done done there so much, so many good things for the for the genre that I uh-huh. think I like. Of course, I still want Opeth or the affirmation affirmation bands to give us something new and more refreshing. But at the same time, it's a little bit selfish considering how much they gave. And if I can have all these other bands that we've been talking about uh, who are carrying out the future prog. I think we should be looking towards them because Blackwater Park, Watershed, those are some of my favorite albums of all times, right? Yeah, yeah. Music in general. And so, and even like um, the Still What? I keep forgetting the name of that album that I love. Still Life. Still Life by Opeth. My God. And when I do. Too many prog albums called Still Life. I know. <laughs> Van de Graaff. Little suspension. Van got it. Yeah. So it's kind of like. And let's not forget Symphony X. Little Symphony X there too. We owe them those a lot. Those bands are old. That's 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 my point. Is that those bands have been around for a while? Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. And, uh, that's the thing. Now uh, there's a band. There's a band that definitely has the potential to be a, a, a alongside Hacken. Yeah, go ahead. It's just I'm still waiting for that thing. Even though they're very a very beautiful band, I just they have too many too much core elements, especially in their vocals. It's uh, Tesseract. Okay. I love their harmonies. I love their harmonies, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I think that like, they're still lacking some elements that would probably like define them as a very quintessential prog band. Even though yeah. I love, 
Now, one band that I would say that is definitely like catching up to hacking, maybe not because of crazy time signatures, but it's more like a groove thing, more like a syncopation thing and, and, and exploring uh-huh. one measure and doing many things is laughs. Especially the vocals, the haunting, the, uh, 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 how can I say? They, they are bringing something fresh to the rock. Yeah. yeah. In my opinion. Because when you hear, when you listen to Lapis, it's something instantly yeah. recognizable. Yeah. That's I've listened. Yeah. And there's a thing too. I've lost, I've listened to a lot of like progressive bands that is like Instagram, YouTube. And I hear the progressive sound, but like you guys are saying, they were like more like clone. Like that is a Brazilian band called Bad Salad. I love. Them. Okay, Thiago Campos. I don't know if you guys know the guys. He's covered a lot of Dream Theater songs. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I love that band. But in the beginning, they definitely more were more like a, 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 how can I say, a Dream Theater clone. Even though I love, them. Don't, yeah. Don't hate there. But they're the least offensive when it comes to that. But there's a lot of bands out there, even though I love them. Let I, me just say one thing. Go ahead. Being progressive. The definition is uh, something. It's something I've read by Robert Fripp. Is that progressive? D- it, you know, let me r- arrange my thoughts. But there are a lot of bands that call themselves progressive, but what they're doing is being regressive. They're taking right. from the older sound. They're not progressing the genre for. They're not doing anything different, and they call themselves progressive because they sound like other progressive bands. In my opinion. Yeah. Sounding like other progressive bands doesn't make you progressive. I think actually progressing the genre does. So there, yeah, there's a lot of dream theater clones, a lot of periphery clones out there, which is another band I wanted to talk about. Okay. Uh, a lot of periphery clones out there now, uh, OPEF clones even, yeah. and they're not progressive to me because they're not doing anything different. They're yeah. just well, a clone of well, another I, progressive band. I'd say this: I'm half and half. Like they're not progressive in the sense where you said like they're not creating their own voice in the genre. Yeah, they are progressive in what they are playing. Are they playing something you would see in a progressive band? Sure. Mm-hmm. But here's uh, my thing: the odd, the odd arrangements, the uh, uh, untraditional uh, the, uh, chord progressions, you know, whatever, right? The quirkiness, whatever you want to call it. The, the, yeah. The usage of concept. Are they progressive in that sense as a genre of a style you hear? Sure. Like you said, though, Ryan. I did be progressed in what the core element of progress is, which is you start a point. You might start in, in a way. But what are you doing to progress your band or your sound? Yeah. So even though you took a lot from the already established genre that you can add, that we can recognize you to add something extra to the exactly. genre. Exactly. Right. No, that I do agree. That I do agree. I can understand where you're coming from on that, but... Yeah, um, when it um, comes down to it, I mean, you have to consider the fact that as much as, like Thiago said, I mean, these people are progressing the genre further, but they are continuing a new line of a specific theme in progressive rock. For example, if I'm going to pull out a pretty uh, an older band that that is, um, as Thiago would say, um, continuing a line, a, a style of progressive rock, in progressive music, the Flower Kings. They're continuing that symphonic prog style that yeah. that have been that had been a, a staple sound since uh, 1970, 1971, and they're continuing that that same style. So I don't think you can really count. I don't. I don't. I don't agree with Robert Fripp. It's because you can always say that. But all these different subgenres in the progressive genre will have their signature sound no matter what. So you can't really change the the, the structure of a of a symphonic prog album or a eclectic prog album because if um in the uh, if there a band releases um something like um Red by King Crimson now, but a little bit different, has its own flavor to it, that would still be eclectic prog and that would still be considered prog. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, well, well, yeah, that's why I separated the idea of a genre. Like, you cannot say, oh, jazz is attitude. No, jazz is a particular sound and rhythm. Don't give me that crap. Of course. You could say that something about the music of jazz that has to uh, uh, drive you to have a certain attitude. Yes. Cool. Yes, we course. can agree with it. Yeah. We can agree with it. Yeah. So, in a sense, I see where Zoltan is coming from saying, oh, come on, Rip, you know the progressive rock music 
is way more than that because you yourself, sir, know so many different styles and genres, and each member of your band <laughs> is a monster the instrument, and they know so many things. You know what I mean? So of course. it's crazy for you to an attitude when you have no Brooks who can solo jazz and whatever in the saxophone and clarinet, whatever, right? Yeah. And then you come out and say, oh, it's just a matter. Like, no, it's a musical style. It is me, yeah. that, change, that, that, that breaks the boundaries first and foremost of traditional music by incorporating not just one style, but various styles to make one chimera of a style, right? Cool. But then you can talk about the, what, what are you doing to make that chimera even more of a, of a, of a unique chimera. You know what I mean? Of course, yeah. of course. Cool. So I agree with Rip. I guess I don't know if that's what he was trying to say. I, I don't read the man's mind, but I can see his point as well. Though. But I do know it was all tennis talking about that. Musically uh -huh. speaking, it is a genre, and we can just freestyle all the damn time because otherwise, everybody is just gonna say they sound progressive. Oh yeah, you know what? I, I can I can agree with that. You made a good point. Um, do you guys want to move on from this topic? Um, let's Ooh, give it a few more minutes. Think? Let's uh, let's give it a few so, more. Oh yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about periphery. Uh, Periphery is a band I do consider progressive. They're classified under Gent, which is a progressive subgenre, in my opinion. Uh -oh. I think what they've done is they've added this. Are we starting with the genre genre. ready? What? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, yeah. Thiago is going to get on the ranch. Here, here, here. Okay, let me just. Let me, they've incorporated a lot of elements. They brought that Meshuga sound into a more melodic light. Um, yeah. And they brought those electronic elements. They've done a lot of, uh, you know, uh, choral sounds, orchestral sounds in their music. I think they do classify as progressive, and I think they've been one of the more popular, influential bands. We're seeing even in, like, you know, bands like Haken, that gent sound, you know, got into that band, you know, yeah, which course. was a Dream Theater clone. But we listened mm -hmm. to Vector, and Vector is a very gent-influenced album. So I really think that gent is part of the future of prog. I don't think it should be the genre that it is because no, it's, everything's overblown. There's just yeah. a million bands that are periphery clones that play gent and they do their, you know, deathcore vocals and their clean vocals and that. And all they do is the zero, zero, zero on the eighth string. But I think as a palette that frog could use in the future, like Haken is doing where they're using it as like a different, you know, as, as I said, like a palette in their, you know, in their color wheel. Uh, to add a different sound, I think the gen has been highly influential in that in that regard. Right, I I well, can understand that. Yeah, go ahead, Dalton. But um, okay, if I'm gonna go ahead and point this out, because I feel like we're transitioning topics a bit. Yeah, I think we're transitioning. I think we're finally transitioning a bit. Um, yeah. I would even go as far as to say that there have been bands, um, even in 1994 with a very popular prog band that we know that even incorporated almost borderline gent techniques in in yep. prog. For example, in Thiago, I know, and well, I already talked about this with Ryan, but when you actually sit down and listen to this song, it has gent techniques. Um, Endless Dream off of Talk by Yes. There are there are gent techniques in there and it's in, and, it, and the song is in drop B. And, 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 and can I add something really crazy about that too? Yeah, go ahead. I was listening to your dad's bands, Concrete and Steel. Mm -hmm. That beginning riff right mm -hmm. after the intro, mm -hmm. it, that's a little janty technique too. A little bit, but I a feel like it's bit. more you know just power that, chords. That syncopation. That syncopation. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, oh, that's yeah. where the idea of the gentiness of the, 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 yeah. know, the, the terms of the technique, if you yeah. want to use it comes from is that you know what i mean that crazy yeah. da, 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 da. you know it's kind of crazy like, you know okay. it just became a different monster so there definitely was already that element because that comes from jazz it does that syncopation is not a metal thing it comes from jazz it does. so of course it already existed it, it comes from all the fusion stuff and all the jazz and yeah not a lot which oh. Meshuggah was listening to. We need we that needs to be said. The Meshuggah is a jazz influenced band. Oh they yeah, are, I can completely agree with that. In my own, I can completely agree with that. They were definitely listening to a bit of Pat Metheny and some Miles Davis eclectic period. They um, were my, the guitarist was his name uh, Frederick. I forgot his name. Thornton yeah, Dahl, Frederick Thornton. Like Thornton. Yeah, 
The man is a huge Alan Hooksworth fan. Of oh, course yeah. he is. You can hear that in the solo. Yeah. Oh, and let me mention something. I was listening to the new Caligula's Horse album, and that thing that struck me is that, what's his name? Sam Vallon, I believe is the name. Sam Vallon. Yeah. That's yeah. All his solos sounded like like Guthrie Govan, Alan Holdsworth, and Pat Metheny, and John Patrici. Like, if he fused, did a little Maybe. chimera of, of that sound, yeah. that's what his solo sounded like to me. Um, Very cool. Yeah, love when I'm hearing the Alan Holdsworth and the Pat Metheny influence. In I, that love yeah. I love it. I love it. That's why I like. Uh, oh yeah. That, that's why yeah. I like the kids. That, that's why I like the kids in the intervals. Aaron. Uh, intervals. Intervals. Yeah. Aaron. Yeah. Aaron. He's huge at the Pat Metheny Alan Holdsworth. It's of such course a, he is. It's so, so obvious. Good, I guess. But oh, yeah. um, I think Thiago, you have a little bit of a rant to go on with uh, people calling gent a, a genre. Yeah, I particularly don't think it's a genre because the very same people that people credit for saying it's a genre despise the idea that it's a genre. It's just a term for a technique for the syncopation, which includes a heavier sound, right, than we would, what we describe by Genesis and Jazz, and more of a, like, chaotic odd meter, right? Or it could it, even be four four. Yeah, It's just a syncopation using it. It's just a subdivision of a time signature. Like the guy, Thomas Haka from Meshuggah, you, you you know you have like a, a, a we would say a, a 11 16 on the double bass and 4 4 here you know mm. you know so it's like a polyrhythmic measure inside 4 4 that is just for me in my opinion is a technique because it has been used before nobody called it gent dream theater was there. symphony x was there. i mean you know here's my thing about about gent I it's, like, it's, it's, like, it's like for me it's got like a slapping bass or tapping a genre that's what it sounds like. Okay. Here's here's my thing. We I call gent a subgenre because there are bands that every song they do has that gent thing. So I'm not saying gent is the genre. It's just a good way for me to group those bands. Okay, I understand that. Well, because it, it, a lot of those bands, all they do is is the gent riffage. So it's it's just a way for me to group them because I don't think they're traditional prog. They're like a different subcategory. Yeah, well, they take one that. technique from Prague and just do that all the time, which kind of mm. makes me li- makes them limited, in my opinion. Mm. So go ahead. Yeah. All right. So um, here we go. We are now transitioning to hot, hot takes. takes. Can I start? Um, here we go. Let, yes, That's go ahead. Time. Go ahead. I want to start. Start. In the Court is not the best King Crimson album. I wouldn't even put it in my top three. You gotta make me. You gotta make. You gotta make me bring the sword out real soon, Brian. Uh huh. Oh. I want to see it. I want to see it so I can call you a week. All right. All right. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. <laughs> oh, God. This Ryan. is going to be good. <laughs> oh, God. No. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to talk about why I don't think In the Court is all that special. I love the album. I think it's a, it's, I love I think it. it's a top three for I just, me. It's I, my third. I it's think there are just three better King oh, Crimson God. albums. Uh oh. Here he goes. Choose your weapon. <laughs> blue one. Which one do you want? The blue one. Oh, oh, both of them too. came out. Both That's of them cool. came out. It's my That's... weapon of choice. Uh, it's your weapon of choice. That's my weapon axe. of choice. Nice axe. Beautiful. Anyway. Say what? Go ahead, Ray. It's Go like Ryan. the Excalibur noise from uh from Wayne's World. <laughs> 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 Anyways, King Crimson. Go ahead, do it. Hit us with this hot take. Um, so I think when we really look at that album, I, th- I just think that every single song on that album, there was a, a track that just did it better. Like 21st Century Schizoid Man. I think Pictures of a City is the better version of that song. Personally. Ooh, that's a hot take. I, th- I think Starless is the better version of Epitaph. Oh my yeah. God. I think Moonchild, it, it drags. It, I think, especially the second half, I'm sitting there. I like, agree with that one completely. They go into that mindless dribble where it's just like, please, let's just, just geez, like, please end. 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 God, I think, God. personally, I would much rather put on Red yes, or here. Lizard or even Lark's Tongues over in the court. Personally. Yeah. I think those records had just a more interesting angle. I agree. Them. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll well, I'd say the court was this. just very, very moody blues. Well, yeah. I mean, 
I'd say this. Uh, the one of the reasons why I didn't place them, uh, place that album as high, like my top threes, is because it's not a third, fourth, fifth album. It's the very first album, and it was already yeah. Dead. It's probably the best debut album of all time. Right, it is, mm, and it, it really changed is. music forever. Rock music, forever. that's what got everybody to start doing rock. To be yeah, honest, popularized yeah. the genre at the very right. least. So that's why I rate it so high because the debut album, they blew everybody away. The, whatever song they were there. Well, so of course, when a band starts out that big, which I wish they still were, and yeah. that influential music and great me sounding music, it's just natural that the follow up, like Red or whatever, might be better. It's just like for me, in some ways, Awake is better than Images and Words. It is. It is. And I was going to talk about that one. Right. Yeah. But I get Good you. Good segue. Good segue that Awake is right. better than Images and Words. I think Images and Words was is a phenomenal mm-hmm. record. But I think Definitely. Awake as a record, is, it, it, it flows yeah. so much better. Yeah. You know, you sit down and you listen to it and every song back to back just works together. Whereas I think you would listen to Pull Me Under and then it would be another day. And I was kind of like, this doesn't, it like it, it's a little jarring, that transition. Then you go to Take the Time, which is a little weird. And then you go to Surrounded. And might I add, I think the second half of that record is a lot better than the first half. The first like- half... You know, with another day. Another day is a good song. I like it. I know Thiago doesn't like it, but yeah. I think that song is. I'm not gonna it, be it's, too many ballads. It, it just, it, I like it. I like it as a song. I just think it sticks out like a sore thumb on that record. Yeah, yeah, true. I think that's probably why I don't like it. So, but Awake has is just is just a record that for me, you know, the first three tracks I like, but I'm not like super into. Every other track, I listen to it straight down, and I'm in the zone. They they just get me every time, you know. Rodomania, right. voices, Silent Man, the Mirror, Lie, lifting shadows off a dream, scarred, space divest. Like, come on! I actually really enjoy Caught in the Web. I love that song. It's I like Caught in the Web, but I'm saying I'm not crazy about it. I think every other track on that album I'm crazy about, but that okay. one I'm really not. Okay. No, so. I, I agree. I I see why you would say that about uh, but. I think it might be a little stretch to say not even top three, but I'll I'll leave it to you. It's your taste. So. Right. Maybe it's top three. I would just say, uh, but the very least, it's not the best, and people overrate the album. And oh, you know what's something a little a, a little unrelated, but every time I see like music fans, like music fans, yeah. what they, that album is always on the top list for these music fans. Right. I'm like. There's just King Crimson records that are like so much more interesting to me, but all of them that's like the record they go to, they flock to it. Which one? Um, in the court. Uh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, speaking of uh, King Crimson, if I may add, um, as much as I have my love for King Crimson, I would say that my three favorite albums are probably. Red is as number one. Yes, um, sir. That's my number one. I'm going to say probably number two is uh, Lizard. Lizard is phenomenal. And number three would be in the court. Um, I'm going to say this, and I know this might uh, go ahead and uh, um, not appeal to a lot of people, but I don't think that Lark's Tongues and Aspic is a fairly phenomenal record. I think it's a little bit overrated. It's still get out the it's, katana. Get out the katana. It's still pretty. It's still okay. But I think that overall, that album, when it comes down to it, it's not nearly as clean and well thought out as Red. It's the trespass of that era. It's the trespass of the John Wetton era. Get the katana out. I'm, <laughs> bruh. Pick it, pick it, pick. Which one do you want? That one on the top's kind of cool. Not gonna lie. Red sure. is by far way better than Lark's Tongues. No, I, I prefer Red over Lark's Tongues, but I think Lark's Tongues, especially the, the sweet Lark's Tongues, is just, I love it because it's so experimental. They add all these, it's it's a lot like yeah. mixing, uh, I've mentioned this a lot, but Miles Davis eclectic period yeah, of course. with like Stravinsky with like metal riffs right or like metal of exactly that time right. which was like sabbath riffs i thought right. that whole thing was so interesting Fair with enough. the violin and everything 
And I like the other tracks. I love Exiles. Might be my That's favorite track song. on the album. I've always loved that one. Book of Saturdays leads perfectly into that song. I like that um, one too. I understand yeah. the I understand the criticism with uh with uh, Talking Drum and Easy Money, but they actually did click with me. I do enjoy them. I was not a fan of those ones. I felt that those ones were too overly free improvisations. Those ones were just way too over the top. Those ones felt for me. Those uh, songs just felt more like just free experimentation with no real mindset going into it. It just okay, felt yeah, like they were going on Starlet. a tangent. But you like Scarlet really, and Bible Black. I, that one is actually well, well, way more thought out. That one was meant to sound like a free improvisation album, but it's actually formatted it was all not live. even close. It was all live improv from what I understand. It was all live improv, exactly. And then it That's went and would like overdub it on, you know, live. So The thing is, is now, that, that one was more clean. I think the album is brilliant. That album... Can I, mean, I add a I like side that album more than in the court? Go ahead, Thiago. A sad observation of what you just said. Uh oh. Or slip. Idea. Oh, the, yeah, let me just. Okay. Yeah. So, that whole idea of like improvisation with no like uh, an end goal, so to speak, or, uh, or. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. yeah. This is what I'm going to bring out just real quick here as a side note to that commentary. Like bands like Dream Theater and whatever, they don't really do that. Even though they no, want to do improv, they did they it do, live. They they do live, but they do in a way where you know it's a beginning, middle, and end. Yeah. And people, especially the old prog fans, call that what? Wankery. Thank you. And King Crimson gets away with it. All the other bands will get away. Oh with yeah, it. that's that's something I wanted to bring up. Because let's be yeah. let's be honest, that whole section that Joe Zoltan talked talked about about that song being completely like just. Crazy improvisation, and like, what the hell is going? Moonshine. That's yeah. something. Even though I love King Crimson, I, I bring out like, as a hypocritical counterpoint of the, the fans. Who say yeah. I said, look, that's wankery. If you want to call something wankery, listen to that. I'm not bashing that necessarily. I say, experiment. If he fails, he fails. At least you try. Yeah, but of course. That's you thing. call Dream Theater wankery a circus show on the stage, but you right. got three drummers, you got a saxophone player, you got a mellotron player, you got two guitars, you got two, three vocalists. Come of on. Course. And let's not even get started about discipline. Oh, right. God, discipline. No, <laughs> yeah. That's not wankery, but Dream Theater yeah. solos, that's wankery, guys. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's the thing. But overall, I think that they just did that that more experimental stuff way better on Starless and on uh and on Red. I feel like it was the year, it was the idea that they were trying to get, and I understand. I understand why people will love, will uh, will like Red because it it has that element that they loved from in the Court of the Crimson King with Moonchild. But I feel like for me, that one was a swing and a miss, and I understand why people would gravitate towards it. It's got that really interesting. They're they're trying something new, but for me, it just it didn't ring with me. It didn't click. And nothing grabbed my ear i was just sitting there thinking this could be over in two minutes and i wouldn't notice i i would probably be happier if it was just pray, two yeah. minutes of the song there's a couple songs like that like specifically moonchild that's how i am with easy money and uh talking drum i just think that the easy ending of talking drum is ear piercing <laughs> yeah. for example i mean if i'm going to bring up a uh, starless and bible black there are a lot of songs on that album that are actually ear grabbing, and they, 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 uh, you know, they, they're catchy. For example, the Great Deceiver, the opening track is. Oh yeah, that's catchy. a fantastic, tra- fantastic track. The lyrics are incredible, and of course, you hear a lot more of John Wetton on on uh, Starless and Bible Black, which is what I did not like about Lark's Tongues. I want to hear uh, John Wetton sing and i thought That's that true. lark's tongue is just it was very devoid of john wetton in all re- in all respects you know i mean I, I actually would agree with that um i think john wetton is one of the strongest prog singers so i didn't like the fact that there was it was very instrumental focused That's the uh, problem. But i think his best performances are definitely on on red oh yeah his best performances are are there but if we're actually going to be talking about his best performances, I would say that his best performances are actually on UK. Well, yeah, in general, perhaps. Generally, yeah. yeah. 
But for I example, mean, that's uh, another one that I really think we should discuss. Why on earth isn't the UK album in the top 250? Why on earth isn't it? Of Prime well, on just, Prime just, just, just as a side note real quick here, one album that I do think is overrated by King Crimson. Yeah, go ahead. Even though I, like, I do kind of like the album, but I think it's kind of overrated. It's the, In the Wake of Poseidon. That's I fun. love In the Wake of Poseidon. I love it too, but it's kind of overrated. Fighting words. Yeah. Fighting words. <laughs> It's it's a good album, but I think that in the wake was in the in the heart of in the court of the Crimson King was better. Yes, yeah. I agree. With that. When you think about it, in the wake is great. However, it was just trying to rehash the things that they did on in the court of the Crimson King and kind of did it in a weaker light. No, yeah, I can, I can, I can. No, I love the album. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but it's in the court. Too. And I, I think people do overblow it. It's important stuff. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Anyways, mm-hmm. you know yeah. one album that I really, really enjoyed surprisingly was Islands. Oh, that's a brilliant album too. That is a great album. No mm-hmm. word of a lie. There. No, of course. A lot of very nice to um, to yeah, that that's one thing. Yeah, here's the thing because, like I said, that's one other thing that we have to talk about is um, after John Wetton left and Adrian Ballou joined. I think that King Crimson went straight down the straight down the the flusher. They 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 went down and they went down in prog quality and why albums that should be in the top hundred, why aren't they there? Wow. Well, I think I think like yeah to the first comment you said I do agree because the vocalist does make a band like it not even prog bands. Yeah. Especially in the court of the Crimson, the, the vocal fries, the, the melodic singing, he was very, very unique. Yeah, right? of course. Then my man goes to UK. Yeah. Which, like you said, though, man, you have a vocalist like that, and you have people like, you know, uh, Bill Bruford who later joined them, right? Yeah. Um, and you have Alan Holdsworth there. Yeah. And, and then, of course, Eddie you, Jobson. You like, this, this is a power band right here. And then Eddie yeah. Jobson, who was. Uh, in my honest opinion, this is going to be a really hot take. I actually prefer Eddie Jobson over Keith Emerson. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, let me clean myself here before I get blood on my shirt. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, here's, 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 I think Rick here. Wakeman is better than both of them. Yeah, that's the thing. I actually prefer Rick Wakeman over both of them. I, I just think Keith Emerson, so? a lot of times, think, he actually I, does... Do wankery, Keith Emerson. Yeah, he is a he is the keyboard wanker. He is the keyboard yes. wanker. Not okay, even, okay. even Jordan Rudess. Jordan Rudess does a little bit, but you know it's funny when I see all these ELP fans ragging on on Dream Theater for the wankery, and I was like, Keith did it first, man. Yeah, <laughs> Keith <laughs> really did it first. He um, did. No word of a lie. I'll I say the same thing. I said the same thing to you. I said before, Ryan. No word of a lie was spoken on this day. <laughs> yeah. Um, one other thing. I'll actually go a step further. I actually think that Lyle Mays is way better than all three. Of course. Lyle oh, my God. Phenomenal. Oh, my God. God. He, he managed to steal the show from me as a guitar player on a guitar album. Pat Metheny group album. I think Lyle Mays was, was more star than Pat Metheny. Album. He was the star of the show. He was. I Not even agree. Pat Metheny. I mean, Pat Metheny yeah, did write a lot of the great songs on that album. However, Lyle Mays performed way performed uh, expertly, and he crafted these unbelievable solos and unbelievable sound structures. You would just sit there and think, "Holy shit!" Just a track like San Lorenzo. His performance, he steals the show on that one. Completely, completely steals the show from Pat Metheny on that one. I'm just, I'm, I'm word of a lie. No one, le- not one word of a lie here. I'm also gonna say this. I don't find Keith Emerson to be a very emotional keyboard player. I don't find um, EOP to be a very emotional band. No, I. That's com- that's one thing that I. That's one but thing you, that I. Find. Yeah, EOP. EOP is the type of band you listen. Okay? Oh yeah. Yeah, good rhythmic patterns. Oh yeah. Crazy, crazy unhinged solos that you can enjoy. Yeah. That I can. Course. I enjoy like this. Not- I don't, I don't get bored of ELP at all. No, you might get too here. much of my mind, and I want to give it a break, yeah. but they never bore me. And it's like, okay, do you want to call it wankery or show? Was it good, good kind of wankery, if you ask me? 
It is the yeah, of course. It's a good wanker. Well, like yeah. you guys said, it is wankery nonetheless. When it comes to Lyle Maze, Lyle Maze, man, come on. He was tasteful. He was emotional. So okay. He grabbed you. Any core progression that he laid in front of you would just be like, wow. You know what my man's secret is? Yeah. You what? know what my secret is? What's that? He's my main secret. He took that whole idea of the classical, because he's a classical pianist, too, not just yes. a guy. He was classically he trained. He took that structure, that unbending structure of a classical music. Yeah. And he, I don't know how the hell he managed to do it, but you're probably the first guy to do it. And he managed to make that work in a jazz ensemble. Improvising, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My dad did the same thing. Your dad does oh, the yeah. same thing. That He's video classically trained. That, posted, that, that video that I posted of your dad doing this stuff, it's exactly like Lion May stuff. Mixed up yeah. with the frog elements. My dad is a classically trained keyboard player, but he plays Are jazz. You? If that's not Lyle Mays to a T, and I don't, and I'm telling you, my dad is, uh, he's a, a great keyboard player. And if you already haven't yeah. listened to the Benjamin's Kite, um, album, we're I releasing did. the deluxe edition, um, after uh, Ingenious Cacophonies was released. Go ahead and listen to that. We got some outtakes and demos Dude, that and mixes. I remember first time I saw your dad playing. Of course. Because Same. he really, I, I, Jesus, I'm gonna say this. If 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 I could count my dad, my dad's probably the most underrated keyboard player in Prague. Oh, yo, yeah, you know one, the problem you know. is with your dad is what is what Josh said in the video I sent you. you remember that video I sent you? Yeah, yeah, of course. The tragedy, the tragedy is not necessarily that your dad didn't want the fame and whatever. No, the tragedy is is that your dad is that hidden gem. If I must, uh, 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 you know, quote Chinese folklore or history. He's like Joe Gill Young, the guy that didn't want to be out there, the genius that didn't want to out there. Everybody should know this guy, but he's just like, hey, I'm chilling, man. You got to come. Yeah, he, did, he didn't, didn't want to continue releasing music when he could have. He really could have. Yeah. He yeah. could have, but um, the story goes. By now. The story goes is that my dad was. Um, my dad had a deal with A and M Records. He had a he had a deal with uh, Univer the Universal Music Group, and uh, they were given a they were given a. Um, the, they were licensed. They released the kite album, and then they were then well, their uh, their manager fucked them over. Uh, Cliff Hunt, I believe his name was, and they wanted that he wanted uh, Dad to not to barely play, just play chords in the background as Robbie Brennan sings and does complete. I remember him telling me that. Yes. Um, the thing was is that when I listened to some of the stuff that they actually did, there was a song on uh, demos downstairs. That was uh, the strength of our embrace. That was exactly what Cliff Hunt wanted. Dad just padding, doing nothing while Robbie does all the guitar chords and vocals. And th that caused my dad to leave. I'm yeah. absolutely. He broke up the grand. He broke up the band. Because right. let's face it, my dad is Benjamin's kite. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you this. Yeah. When I show people your dad's band, yeah, that's the first thing that sticks out. Who the hell is the guy on the keys? Yeah, of course. Yeah, exactly. I, th this is this is why I shared the video. I told you on the story because people, some people are asking me, "Who mm -hmm. is this guy on the keys?" I said, "You're gonna see who he is," and then mm -hmm. they're like, "Wow!" Yeah, and he's like, he's the, "He's the most talented guy in the band, hands down." And I said, and "Here's the thing." The guitar, what would you say? The, the old guitarist was probably the second, right? Zoltan? Uh, hold on, what? Your dad, what the question? When it comes to town, you say the, the guitarist was the most talented after your dad? The old one, not the one right now. Um, how do you mean? By old, by the old guitarist. The old guitarist. The old guitarist that Benjamin Scott had. Before the vocalists start taking over the guitar. Because I know he left, right? Wasn't it the same guy? Robbie Brennan? Yeah, it's the same guy. Robbie so, Brennan has been the guitarist for the la since 1990 to 1993 to, to the present. All right. Yeah, there you go. But there's a member of the band that he's not. He left and he never. Like, I don't uh, that was uh, Greg, the bassist. Oh, okay. So the great. guitar has always been the same for the band because I remember like some stuff done. And I'm like, and you guys saying, well, he can't do that too much. The other guy could. 
Oh yeah, um, my dad had a different guitarist in uh, the late in the late in the mid '80s. His name was Steve McPhee, and he was like, an extremely Steve, Steve Hackett uh, influenced guitarist. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's the second most talented one in that record. Well, I would completely agree. Um, we never got to uh, contacting Steve McPhee, but we uh, I've been trying to get him to contact him, but we never. Uh, oh, it is what it is. Yeah, of course. Um, speaking like of which, I said, yeah. I'm right here. Ryan's right here too. You guys never yeah. mean anything. Yeah, I already talked to you about it once. We um, well, we are um. Speaking of which, we are finally getting ready to release. We got some um. Actually, Ryan heard um one of the songs that have uh, we haven't even heard that we've barely li- heard. We haven't. We recorded it about six months ago, and we haven't uh-huh. heard of it since. Was uh towards Orion, the Lyle Mays tribute. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, and, and I loved it. It was so good. I'm really hyped to hear the rest of the album. To be honest, and that by the way, that part is that song is part of a 27 minute concept piece. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Damn, bro! Doesn't get more prog than that. No, I know. We we've got the we've got a we got soft rock songs. We got hardcore prog songs. We got we got classical classic prog. We got. We even got a little bit of space rock thrown in there as well. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. We All got right. it. We've, we've kind of gone off on a bit of a tangent, but speaking of what, of, let's continue good. with the hot like takes. Hey, hot it's takes. Pro- hey, it's progressive, right? Hey, it's progressive, yeah. right? Progressive. We went on on the we instrumental are, tangent, we are talking prog. jam. Anyways, <laughs> let's go. Um, more hot takes, and uh, hey, for no, the no, next four that, minutes. That, that's another one. The talking gents. Get it? Oh my god. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, go ahead, more hot there. takes. More hot we, takes. Provide. Provide us with some more hot takes. Uh, you I don't think you've given us any Zoltan, so I think you need to give I us gave one. I gave us I gave you guys like three. <laughs> three? <laughs> okay. Yeah. The hot takes like the ones you said before? Yeah. Do I stop? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead on a hot Whatever. take, Diago. All right, you hot, t- hot takes here. You fans out there, don't come at me. There's no hate. It's just what I think. <laughs> Jira is not prog. Well, we were we were going to uh, get to we that. We were going to get to that. We're, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to the not prog section. We'll get to the not prog. We'll get to the prog we'll section because I just wanted to get the one out of the way. So I <laughs> well, we're going to get to that in the next. Let's... All right, then I'll save. Okay, I'll have another hot take then. Okay, go ahead. Um, this is more akin to what I see right now on social media, right? Go ahead. Um, I think like the, on the subject of clones, yeah, I think there's too many people trying to be clones too. I oh, yeah. agree. It's like it's, 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 it's one thing. It's one thing for you to be a clone because you're inspired by the guy, and then you yeah keep cloning and playing, playing to you create your own voice. Of course, versus the guy who does want to be a clone. Of course, yeah. You know what? I, I I I I'm so offended that you are personally attacking. Me as a John Petrucci clone on the guitar. <laughs> I'm a clone of him too, but I noticed yeah. that you have your own style. I have my own style a little bit. Yeah. I can hear when you're playing. I can tell it too, even though it's similar to John. I'm talking about the dudes who want to sound exactly like that and make an effort. Oh, here's a 20, 20 John Petrucci licks for you to learn how to sound like yeah. John Petrucci. I hate yeah. those things. Yeah. I hate them too. I, I look at those licks and then I make my own version of those. Thank yeah. you. I, I watch, a, like I say, a Steve Morse video, and he does his lick, and I hear that sound, and I do it in my own way. Right, Because I don't, want, I don't want to be Steve Morse. I want to be the best version of Ryan Bazale, the guitar player that I can be. I don't, I don't want to be Steve Morse. As much as Steve Morse is amazing. Right, of course. But yeah, there's um, too many clones out there. I completely uh, agree with that. You know, as much as I hate to say it, I think Rich Hanschel is kind of a John, a John Petrucci clone. He is. Mm-hmm. Rich Hanschel from Haken. Yeah, a little bit. Um, if I may go get in another hot take in here, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah, go for it. There it. are a lot of things that I would say that you know we could always talk about hot takes, but if we're gonna go ahead and bring in huge hot takes, huge hot takes, big hot take. This big is uh, take. this might uh, this might um. Uh, break me but i I've, i brought this up in the the first time we brought this up i think for me 
there this this is one of those things that I've always been uh, a little bit off about but I think that Dream Theater had golden years and I think that yeah. those golden years ended immediately after uh, Mike Portnoy left there's another there's a uh, and after Octavarium was released they slowly slipped out of that golden year era That's not a hot yeah. take Well that is, uh, some would take. debate you on that. That is the coldest take I have heard all day. The well, thing well, is, for us fans, Ryan, for us fans, yeah, but there are people right now who might. However, disagree. however, oh my God. I'm gonna say now, this. People told me that distance over time and the astonishing were their favorite albums. I was like, that's one thing. That's what however, saying. this that's is the other. Saying. This is Those one. Might get offended, so it might be a hot take for them. So that's one part of the hot take. However, I have another part. Oh, God. Okay, we're going to tear apart for this one. Probably. I don't think Metropolis Part 2 is their best album. I think that Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence is yeah, their best the record. Katana. Six Degrees is a flawed record. I, think I the love half, it. Zoltan! Zoltan! Don't you dare. Don't you Freaking dare. Okay. <laughs> don't you the dare. The second half of that record is phenomenal. I still believe that the better version of that second half is... You know, on the, the live uh, with the orchestra, the yeah. Octavarium orchestra thing. That's but really good stuff. I think that first half is kind of flawed. I think there's, oh. you know, Blind Faith a little boring. I love I that think... song. I, I don't. <laughs> I like the middle of the song. I don't like the song at the beginning much. Yeah, the yeah, the beginning was a little bit. bit yeah. But when it gets to the instrumental part, I do love Blind Faith. Yeah. The little groove there. The, I. Um, one other thing is that I think that uh, Glass Prison is a great, um, is probably the best song in the uh, 12 Step Suite. It's, I think yeah, any, most people agree with you. That that it. I completely agree. I mean, God, I there's agree. so many great things about that album. And I would also say, and this is gonna, this this is one of uh, one part that people are gonna hate me for. But I think that the second half of uh, Six Degrees, the actual epic of Six Degrees, is probably their best epic. No, yeah, I think it's up there. I like Change of Seasons a little bit more, but I think that's probably, probably yeah. my second favorite of their their epics. It's yeah. certainly their longest. Certainly their longest like, for sure. It's forty minutes. People, what? Forty. People love Name Me Off the Variant. Right. People love Name Me Off the Variant. I love that one too. That one's great. I look. I love it, but to be honest with you, that it rips. That that hack and fingerboard intro drags on a lot. It does drag on. That's and one thing. There's a couple sections of that song that make me cringe, like the the ending, the trapped inside this octaverium. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of cringe when I hear that's it. That's a little cringy. And little I, cringy. you know what? I've also realized that the epic of um, octaverium rips a lot of Genesis. It ripped writing yeah. the scree. It ripped off writing the scree. Cinema, cinema show writing the scree off of the yeah. lamb. And I well, think they, there was they, even they a little bit of fifth or fifth in there show. too. I think they even ripped off a little bit of Fifth or Fifth in there, too. Could be. That's definitely influenced there. I the intro reminded cool. me of Shine on Your Crazy Diamond. That's so Part much one. true. That was so Pink that Floyd. That was so obvious. That was the obvious they Pink Floyd. They were listening to Wish You Were Here when they recorded that. That, that, was, that was even funny. I'd be like, really, bro? Really? No, that, yeah. I was like, it's Shine on Your Crazy Diamond LD, bro. Come on. Come on. I was like, okay, buddy. Well, okay, the, Rudess. The, the, the lap steel guitar and all this other yeah. good shit. So cool. Um, oof. If, if I'm going to... A little you and I as well. I can oh, see yeah, that. yeah, yeah. With the lap steel, um, and the chord structures. You know, if, I, if I'm if i going to go ahead and do another one, um, I could continue the, through this Dream Theater one, but I'm going to go ahead and say this. People, compl people give too much shit for going for the one by yes. People give it way too much shit. I think it's probably their second best record. Well, you haven't listened to Relayer. So, I know, but I have a feeling it's not going to... I don't think it's going to be uh, close to the edge or going for the one. I don't think it's going to... It'll be okay, going okay, for the one. one. Zotan, Zotan. Nah, Knowing you so. how you are, it'll be going for the one. Don't yeah, so. re reserve your words for now, my, my young friend. Relayer is going to blow your mind, especially the gates of Relayer. When we go to the uh, other episode of Rock Talk, then after you listen to it, then we're going to ask you the same question again. We're gonna Remember that one. <laughs> remember your answer so i think going for the one there's i believe the the track that i don't like is parallels 
Oh, I yeah. love that song. That's so good. I never, I never got it. But the other tracks in the story, especially Turn of the Century, the title track, and of course, probably one of my favorite Yes tracks, Awaken, they really make that album for me. But I didn't really like Parallels, to be honest. You're forgetting one track. <laughs> Oh, Wondrous Stories, but that's kind of like in the middle for me. I love Wondrous Stories. It's a brilliant... uh, It was the idea of showing everyone's vocal vocal um beauty. It was their uh, it was their way of saying that we can sing. They we can sing, but Genesis can't dance. (laughs) Okay. Speaking of Genesis, I wanted to do a hot take about them. I think Foxtrot is better than Selling England. Oh, that is... You are bringing the fists. I am taking my gloves off. Gloves are off and my hands are on fire. You got Canadian hands, man. You're going to hurt nobody. I have small hands. But you see... Zoltan, you're talking to a man right now that just shaved and he's Cuban, bro. I'm just going to point this out. not going to mess with Ryan. I... (laughs) I cannot agree with that. You don't want me with that smoke, bro. That's putting that out there. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. Hot take. As Wait, much I as I think, why I, I didn't explain why I like Foxtrot better. Go ahead. Okay. Please do. I think Foxtrot is I'll all killer, disagree. no filler. If we think, if we consider Horizons as an intro to Supper's Ready, which I do, it's not. I think it's it's it is. It really is. It's it connects. Not. It really connects, and it's an interlude. So I don't That's really count it as a, tr- as a track anyways. So um, That's if we really count it that way, it's an all filler, no killer album. Whereas I think, you know. You just said it's uh, an all filler, no killer album. All killer, no filler album. There you go. There you go. There we go. There you go. What's Big that song on, uh, in Selling England? Not Isle of Plenty. It's called After the Ordeal. Yeah. I always thought it was a little fillery. To the be thing honest. is, is that when you look at it, Historically speaking, it was meant to be an intro to to cinema, cinema show, show, and it was credited as that before. Same with after the ordeal; it was the outro. Yeah, Isle of Plenty. So it would make it a seventeen-minute song. Up. Isle of Plenty is the outro. After the ordeal is the beginning. That that would be, it's the same. Which it's the same no argument sense. for it, it's Which the same no argument sense. for Horizon. Let me let me make a stupid point about this. Why yeah. would you call the intro track after the ordeal? Mm-hmm. Because it's before. I know. That's why, why the weird thing. Why would you call it thing. after the ordeal? I don't know 100%. That's stupid. I've, I think that it's loosely basing, but I don't think it's one. I don't think that the lyrics are 100% tied, but I know that there is some form of tying between them. I know that, but I mean, if you look at it, I mean, if Horizons isn't filler, then, same, then it's the same with uh, after the ordeal. Okay, but after the ordeal is longer. It's like four minutes of of horizons. I know, but when you really think about it, it's they. There's a lot of really interesting things about that song, and as far as I know, I think that Mike R- R- Rutherford actually plays cello on that song. Really? Yeah, he plays cello on that song, as far as I remember. Kind of interesting. And I, I think mean, I, got, um, I gave it a re-listen the other day, yeah. and I'm gonna just say I enjoyed Foxtrot more than Supper's Ready. Fox shot more than someone's ready. <laughs> I mean, it, it, is, it is currently 10:18 p.m. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's showing in you, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I enjoy Fox more than telling you England by the pound. I understand. Song, that. This is what happens um, when we don't have scripts. That's um, just what happens. I'll say this: I can understand why you would say that. However. If I'm gonna go, if I'm gonna provide my own hot take on Genesis, I think that when it comes down to it, for me, Selling England is number one. But okay. there are two interchangeable albums: The Lamb Lies Down and Foxtrot. The Lamb Lies Down could w- be my second favorite Genesis record one day, and Foxtrot would be my second favorite another. I have a hot take about The Lamb. Oh no! It's oh, a little long. It's a little long. How, when are we gonna move off on the? Says hot the Dream Theater fan. <laughs> Well, Dream Theater only made one one and a half hour album, and it's not my favorite. I criticized it. I love it, but I did criticize it six degrees. Um, 
Mm. Well, they made uh, the Astonishing. I don't like that album either. Isn't uh, um isn't uh how many songs in Astonishing in thirty two? Hold on, 30, a minute. thirty three something like that. Thirty two, oh, I think. Wow. Hold on, let me see here. It's ridiculous. Hold and on, it sounds like a Disney There's music. Nothing, none of them is worth a damn. Oh no, nah. Metropolis Part Two is an hour is an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah, and it's worth the hour and twenty minutes. So is the Lamb. I think there's just some moments on the Lamb that I'm kind of like okay, like please please explain. There's not a know. moment. There's not a moment on scenes from a memory that I that I'm bored. And I can't I can't agree with that. It's a hot Lamb. takes up, man. That's that is a lot of hot takes. What moment on scenes from a memory are you bored? Uh, there's there's some moments on um uh, what was there was a there was a few tracks that I was not the biggest fan a few of tracks oh a few God. there was a few parts and a few tracks Sacrilege. that I was just a Sacrilege. little bit um I loved home home was amazing I think that there was a lot of moments on finally free that were fantastic um I a think that there, I think that there I uh God, if I'm gonna go ahead and say it, wait, what was that? Strange Deja Deja Vu doesn't capture me a hundred percent. I mean that track is you know it's good. I don't think it's like the best track on the album. It's but it's it's a relatively short song and it's just I think it's cool. It's, I like the intensity it's of it. It's, just, it's, it's, like like six it's like overture. It's like overture. It's kind of like a filler. It is a filler. It is a filler. It's not really filler. I just think it's, just, it's think building it's... up. And I think as a track, it's really important for the album. It sets the scene. It's if the that, thing that we hear. If, if that's a setup track, then so is After the Ordeal. Fine. Okay. See? Okay. <laughs> that one's five <laughs> minutes. After the Ordeal is three and a half. But Strange Deja Vu is cool. I like it. I so, can't, I can't do that one. I, can't do that. I was not a fan of that track. I, I like the that's... ending. You know, the ending's like funky. Yeah, uh, uh, down, I, yeah that's down, the thing. Down, down, down. And I think that as I much as I love, as much as I love uh, the Dance of Eternity, no, it's no. it's oh, a, no. it's so good, but it has no feeling whatsoever. It's emotionless. It's not meant to be. No, it's not meant to have feeling. The whole I know of that's the, the problem. It's to show off the turbulent nature of love. Yeah, I get that. And you know, human really? relationships, which the whole the whole album is about. Right. The Dance of Eternity is is this centerpiece in the album that's talking about kind of like the the turbulent nature. So it's not supposed to be melodic, but there are there are moments on the album that are melodic. Of this course, is of course, supposed to be turbulent and chaotic for the sake of it. But uh, and it works. But I do want to hear what what you what songs you could uh, take off of uh, the Lamb. I I am curious as to that. <sighs> let's let's go on the track list because I forget because there's a lot of them. Oh yeah, of course, of course there, there is. There are a lot of songs. However, yeah, I think party. if I could delete a few songs off of uh, of uh, the uh, the astonishing, melody. if I could uh, get rid of a few songs off of uh, the astonishing, I would get rid of um, every single song except for a new beginning. <laughs> every just, just delete the album. Just delete like, get rid of that album. album and try. Just, just go on a John Petrucci's computer, hack it, and delete the album. <laughs> get rid of it. It's garbage. <laughs> That it's was garbage. That's that's probably their worst album. On, in all honesty, it, that's it the worst the, album. The because here's the thing: the 2013 Dream Theater album is boring, but at oh. least it's like 53 minutes. Yeah, actually, I think that um, I think that uh, uh, Elimination Theory is a great song. Oh, it's um, great. I, I, I like just the... I'll be. Go ahead, Zach, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, okay, my only really criticism yeah. in uh, Illumination. Is that my man John kind of sounded a lot of sloppy on that solo? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I noticed that. He, you know, uh, maybe it's an age thing. Oh, I'm he's he's going to have too much later. imagination, man. And why? Wow. Mm -hmm. He's just been getting a little complacent in his playing lately. He is. And he's a genius. I don't get it. He's a genius, but here's the thing the new album had his best guitar playing in a long mm. time. True. Mm -hmm. I think um, stuff like Untethered Angel, Barstool Warrior. Yeah, those are great solos stuff. on That's those tracks great. were just amazing. And they yeah. showed off his just real sound, which is more yeah. exotic and more, you know, uh, yeah. more Holdsworth than Hammett. Speaking sure. of uh, Holdsworth. Uh, oh, let me let me say the tracks that I don't. Go I, ahead. We can cut out of the lamb. 
Go ahead. Broadway Melody. Oh, that that's an interesting one because I, I don't think... know why they cut that off because that one was just supposed to be an outro of uh off fly on a windshield. Yeah. yeah. Uh, why did I'm they cut that? Unpopular opinion. I hate back in NYC. Oh, I love that track. It's it that's the a great melody, track. Though, it grates my ears. The back in New York City. Well, it's meant to be a character yeah. song rather than an I'll actual be, I'll melodic. Be, I'll song. be honest. To be honest, that song for me, I enjoy it, but when he gets that melody, it's kind of like, what? And then, and then with the keyboard arpeggios, I'm just like, turn this off, right? I'm like, no. Well, you uh, have to think of other... that one as a character song. That's it. That's a characteristic. They song. They could have done the character that. song better. Uh, that's that's a hot take. I love that song. So I can't uh, I can't I agree with like you on Island that one. Sorrow and Empty Boats. I don't know. I, I never. Yeah, that one's a weird one. I've never understood Ravine that one either. Ravine too. Ravine I never got. And in the Rapids. Oh, those two are great. Yeah, All the good. the solos and the atmospheres. Those ones are ones that are real atmospheric pieces. Again, I haven't listened to this album in like a month. So probably tomorrow, I'll do a re-listen. But yeah. Uh, I think that one pe- one song that people under credit is writing the scree. That's a fantastic song. That one I like. I yeah, love I that. That's a great bro, we song. We went from hot takes to, to Genesis, bro. But we're rambling I'm, on. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, say one more thing before we change subjects. Again. Uh, to um bands that are not prog that people consider prog, but for why this last little note. I'm going to go ahead, get, go ahead and say this. Um, I think that when it comes down to Dream Theater's sound as of uh, Distance Over Time, that album was really well written. However, overall, the production, as well as, as much as it sounded great, it was way too robotic. Oh, yeah. It sounds like a Pro Tools record. It literally sounds like it was r- drawn out. It sounds like it, it was all MIDI. It was like on a metronome. This grid. is why. Which is why one of the reasons I prefer the dramatic elements. I guess so, but I still like the writing more on Distance Over Time. Uh, I don't know about that. I Bridge in the, uh, bridge in the Sky, oh, Lost but Not Forgotten. Uh, Bob, I like I mean, writing um, on both records. Let's just yeah, I mean, I, 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 just, I just think that, that uh, the dramatic was more centered, more focused, and it was more on point, especially it, like it no, was breaking, focus, breaking all illusions. Make- Oops, sorry. Breaking all illusions. I mean, but if you're talking about as a standalone songs, I don't know. Like, there's there's some stuff in distance that I don't know. Like, if you just take it as a metal album more than anything, like it's a progressive metal album. Some few like rock rock songs there. Now, distance over time for me. I don't know. The overall is more of a complete album because they explore all the sides of Dream Theater. Yeah. Here's this is over thing. time. This over time is for me. It's like in another attempt at like train of thought. Here's my no. thing. I think that uh, it was very easy for them to be on point with uh with dramatic turn of events because it was images and words too. Yeah. Basically, yeah. It was you know as much as I love the original, you know nothing can compare to the original. I agree. Me and Zoté even said that when me and Zoté start talking, it's like they, they just went back to that images and the words writing. Of course, and I've I've always and, thought and, and that that was the thing. If that... they wanted to do that, why didn't they do that right after Images and Words? Why I they don't wait? know. They waited well, wait twenty years. Like to make it too. I'll say this, and I feel like this is probably going to come up again. But you know what? We're we're this is one thing that I love about this uh this podcast. We we talk about one thing and then it turns into this huge tangent because you know what? We are all all three of us. We are talking it's to the audience rock. right it's now. We, we, okay? we love progressive music. We are progressive we music progressive enthusiasts. Music. We are enthusiasts of progressive music. We are players of progressive music. We write progressive music. So we are into this kind of thing and we team. love this kind of thing. And we embody it. We are the, we are prog. <laughs> we are prog. <laughs> we are prog. Anyways, bands that are not prog, but people insist they are. Okay. Can I just go on one thing? Yes. <laughs> on prog archives, are there death records in the top one hundred? That a prog band. That's the thing. There you, you go. You cannot be a progressive band by only screaming. Nope. 
Well, I mean, it, yeah. And they don't so. do the contrast. They they're very much a heavy band. They did they they bordered on technical death metal. Uh, they by did the, by the sound of perseverance, and I, I like that record. But yeah. it isn't a prog record. Like when we think of progressive death metal, I think of Opeth because they have these transitions. They have the dark, the heavy, and then the soft, and still dark. Yeah. But it's that you know contrasting of the dynamics. Mm. There was another which band death never did. There was another band. I don't know if you guys ever listened to them, which is two block of Spottles. Not really that thing. It's called Into Eternity. It was kind of like Children of Bodom went prog. You know what I mean? Okay. I like mm-hmm. I like him. The vocals. He could scream. He could growl. He could sing melodically. Like he had the talent of like he sounded like if Bruce Dickinson and Mike Nico Akerfeld and I don't know what's the other guy I can throw in there. Uh, um, Spencer from Periphery. We're in one person. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he's very, very talented. I don't know, like, he sounds too generic, but he's very talented. And they did beautiful progressive metal, death metal as well without the tech. Yeah. It, you know, and, and, and like you said, I totally agree with you on when it comes to the whole death thing. Because there's so many more examples there. And that doesn't even, like, Never measure. a keyboard. Never had keyboards. They didn't do instrumental sections that much. Maybe it was, like, yeah. two minutes of solos. That's about it. But... There was never a keyboard, never a Mellotron, never an instrument that wasn't just guitar, bass, drums, vocals. Yeah. Right. That's they true. made, I don't remember ever even seeing an epic. No. Nope. So I, I don't know what qualifies Death as a progressive band. I really don't. They don't, they in my band. honest opinion. They were a good band. I think yeah. they made They're some great. of the most intriguing Death Metal. They did. Ever, but they're just not a progressive band. They are not. Um, another band that uh, we all have our complications with, Gojira. Should I go? I don't. Yeah, go for it because you, 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 you have the first most beef. Days, just to get the fans a little bit less upset with me, if you guys are any Gojira fans are watching this, when I first heard about them, it was through Josh's brother, Alex. Um, Alex was all raving about the video, you know, and we put it on, and Josh was bored out of our minds. And Alex kept insisting, oh, you guys give him a chance. I said, Alex, I'll do something for you. I go back home and I'll binge, listen to uh, what are the main three albums that you want me to listen to? Magma from Mars to Sirius, and, or oh, Sirius to Mars, whatever it's called, and uh, Flying Whales, right? Yeah. Went through all of those three. Painstakingly asked effort, by the way. Oh, my God. And I was like, okay, so where's the problem? Yeah, where's the prog? I've always I think, said that. I think that their most progressive, if we could even count it, it's their most progressive album so far is Magma. That one's the one that has the most progressive elements, but it's still not progressive by any means. It's like they give nods to progressive, but it's not really. I, I don't think a lot of these guys don't understand what progressive means. Yeah, that's progressive the thing. Progressive doesn't mean I just sound different than regular sludge metal band or the death metal band. No, sorry, oh, yeah. that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Yeah, there's there's elements to it. Elements to it. There's, there's there's a bit of, oh, sorry. No, there's there's a keyboard in Gojira. They do a little bit of ambience. Maybe it wasn't a keyboard, but yeah. they never had a keyboard. They ambience in they, Slipknot and the Godsmack. Yeah, there's yeah, ambience exactly. in a lot of bands. Um, Might as well call Slipknot know, a prog band. Slipknot does long songs. I think they actually of, have an epic. Lucas enlightened me to this. That uh, Lucas is my bass player. For mm-hmm. those right. who don't know. Um, he enlightened me to the fact that Slipknot does epics at the end of their albums that are like these like slow, heavy things. Yeah, Slipknot did one on Iowa. It was a 16-minute piece title track, Iowa, which was very weird. It changed a lot. There was a lot of orchestration. It was very complex and weird. So yeah, why, why aren't we calling Slipknot prog? Right. Exactly. Silly. exactly. I'll give an example. I don't think the riffs, I don't think the guitar playing in Gojira is technical. I don't think it's no. all that progressive. No. There's, no. there's no guitar solos in it that you can be like, oh my God, what a guitar solo. Yeah. I mean, people get off on the catchy riff. I'm like, okay, but that's cool. All right. But how's that even different too, though, at the same token? And here's mm-hmm. a band that I even said before to you guys that, you know, has way more progressive elements. Uh-huh. Then uh 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 would you rather have Rat Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Ghost does the saxophones and they have the keyboards and they have saxophones. everything. 
Every song they more dynamics. Like, reminds me of like, okay, that's Blue Eyes the Cult, that's Rush, that's some King Crimson in there. That's some. That's like they're not that virtuosos, but they do play a lot of times. They do play with concept albums. Matter of fact, their concept album is one after the other. Like one concept album is a continuation of another. Yeah, yeah. and they have overarching yeah. themes with the pop. And the themes, the the costumes, like you know Peter Gabriel does the whole role yeah. playing thing. Yeah. play Meredith's or Bishop or whatever. So yeah. there was, I'm like, these guys are way more prog than any of this freaking band. And more dynamics, because that's one big thing that a, a lot of these so-called prog bands, they miss. No um, and another dynamics. Thing, another thing Absolutely is, another thing is, no dynamics. Yeah. No dynamics. And he's another hot take. Mary Duplin Tier is fucking overrated. Sorry, I have to say it. I think he's a good drummer. I think he's, he's good, good but he's not. I think he's overrated. He's definitely. But there's no way in hell that Joe Duplantier is a, is a prog guitar player. I'll say no this. I'm gonna say this, and this is my perspective as a drummer. I don't think Mario's. Ever, he's not all that in in. A, he's not all that in a box of chocolates. I've never thought that Mario is a phenomenal drummer. He's very average. Oh, he does it in terms fast. Of his, he's a very average death metal drummer. Um, another yeah, band. I mean, them guys want to compare yeah. him to. Thomas Hawk, I'm like, get your asses out of here. No. Stop. Can't no. do that. My man is a master syncopation and polyrhythmic. Oh, God. You guys want, really? I mean, come on, man. All I'm saying is this. Yeah. If you love your artist, there's no problem. Love your artist. Support yeah, of course. And, 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 and of course, to their credit, they sound beautifully tight live. They're yeah. very nice ensemble band. I cannot criticize their sound quality whatsoever their guitar tone is ridiculous oh yeah their guitar tones are unbelievable and i actually enjoy their music i do enjoy a lot of their music especially the stuff on i can see like personally i can see why some people might like but i think one of the one of the things that this that turned me off from them is that i was introduced to them and the people kept insisting this is a good progressive metal band yeah progressive metal oh crap okay if they just said okay this is a death metal band as much metal you might enjoy I might have taken a different approach and I'd be like, okay, I can see it. Kind of like Static X or Macedon or whatever, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay, um, I, can, yeah. I, can, I can dig it. But no, I mean, them guys are throwing them up there with uh, Mike Portnoy and some like, stop, stop. Okay, yeah. another band that people are now. Uh, no, that's not what I was going to say, but. I, I wanted to talk about Tool. Okay, go yes. ahead and I'll talk about Tool. <laughs> Tool is nowhere near progressive. The only progressive yeah. member of that band is the drummer. Yeah, yeah. I, can't, I can't remember his name. What's his name? Danny Carey. He's Danny a huge. Carey, yeah. Danny Carey's a great guitar. A great drummer. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he yeah. is an inspiration to me. No, he's an amazing drummer, and they're a good band. I enjoy their music, but I do too. You know, playing the same drop D grunge riffs, doesn't make them odd times. And putting Bill Bruford drums over them does not make you prog. Does not make you prog. I'm just eight, saying. Eight, seven, most of the groups six, eight, seven, eight, or the occasional five. Seven, eight, eight, eight grunge riffs in drop D is yeah. not prog. Sorry. I will say this though. I mean, I do enjoy a lot of their albums, like Ten Thousand Days, Am- Enema, uh, Lateralis. Oh, yeah. Those are yeah, borderline yeah. prog, right but not really. They're they're way more prog than Gojira. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, okay, let, me, let me say one thing. What, what yeah, go enraged ahead. me. I see all these people who don't listen to prog. They listen to Tool, which is perfectly fine because, yeah, of, course. of course, Tool isn't a prog band. Um, and they go on and on about how Tool's lyrics are amazing. But these are the same people who would criticize Yes and John Anderson's lyrics for being hippie nonsense. Okay, and yeah. Don't mean but yeah, anything. I mean, every single tool yeah. lyric is up there with DMT trips. And it's like some new age DMT. Like, like, okay. We get need over yourselves. You're not gods. One. We get it. You're trying to say you're yeah. higher than everybody else. If I'm going to go ahead and point out one perfect example, there's one song on Enema that if you cannot criticize the Yes lyrics, it's so hypocritical. <sighs> Hooker with a penis. Oh my god. Oh that, god. Those lyrics are so fucked up. You cannot say that Yes has weird lyrics when you're listening to that. That is well, so that's hypocritical. Like Zappa. That, that's a lot more like Zappa. I know, but you cannot criticize Yes for their lyrics when you have lyrics like that. Thanks. Speaking yeah. of which, another al- another band that people are claiming is progressive metal now. Zappa. 
Another band that people are claiming is progressive metal that I cannot understand. Metal. Avenged Sevenfold. Yes. Oh, oh my god. No. Slap people, they added keyboards to their music and suddenly it's Suddenly they're progressive. <laughs> They, they did a long song and they added keyboards and they did a concept record. Wow, they did one did song that's over three. six minutes. Whoa, whoa, slow they, down. They, Impressive. And can I tell you what's stupid Impressive about that? Me. Yeah. What's up? It, they didn't keep Mike Portnoy, would have, which would have made their band progressive if he had uh, right. By I'm so glad that Portnoy know. didn't stay in that band. Yes. Yeah, so no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, if he could be a legit member and then write. If if you want, they another, wouldn't let him. If you want, that to could have been a possibility where he could guide the band to become a prog progressive metal. Band. Yeah. Over, uh, 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 eventually, if he had a writing uh, 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 authority in the band, mm -hmm. if he stayed in the band, but because they mm -hmm. didn't like let me get some keys, I'm like, come on. Um, I'm just going to point this out. And as much as I, I think that their newest album is way more progressive than their earlier albums. It's progressive influence. They there is might progressive have been influence. Dream Theater. However, yeah. there is one band that I, even though I think Avenged Sevenfold, eh, it's way more acceptable than what I'm going to say say now. Two, two death technical deathcore bands that people can, are claiming are progressive. One, first off, Lamb of God. Two, no. Springs of Saturn. Oh okay. my God! Who's I knew Lamb of God. Springs of Saturn. Rings of let me talk about Rings of Saturn. Rings of Saturn, and we we know this oh. is reamped Guitar Pro MIDI <laughs> over programmed drums, <laughs> and they don't is. play live. They literally don't play live. Damn. That's not progressive. That is so true. The strength of progressive bands was always live. Mm. I prefer a lot of Genesis and Dream Theater, and yes, live versions to the studio stuff because they were such great musicians that the studio couldn't capture their amazing performances yeah. as a band together. That's what can makes I, can, prog can music. I lay blame? Can I lay some blame, though? Yeah. You know what I think it is? Correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong. I think a lot of the... I don't say necessarily want to say blame. I think blame is a strong word. But I think what has happened is that you have guys like Steve Terriberry, Jared Dines, uh -huh. are very, like, core-oriented dudes. Uh, what's the name? Rob Scalen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they listen to those kind of bands and for them everything's prog therefore their fans and audience who also enjoy those bands well like, oh, this is prog because Jared uh, you know he'd be listening to them he'd be sort of like yeah but he's a huge metalcore guy to be honest of course he is I know his, his bread and butter is metalcore I, I love him I love Jared Dines and I love Rob Scott. I don't <laughs> me too I love them guys I love them all but yeah, I, think, I think I think Jared Dines is a good person but I think his content's a little over the top yeah over the top, a little cringy, but he's a good person. He does a lot of good things. For Same the, with for the Steve. Community. I wish, I wish, I wish he didn't Steve more with it, Steve. To be honest, but I'll, no, I'll keep no. Steve. He's Canadian. All right. Oh exactly. yeah. <laughs> but so, <laughs> there's that culture that they will listen to a metal band and then out of the blue they will hashtag progressive metal, right? Yeah. And so there is that issue. Mm. Also, the issue where come on, I do like Lamb of God, but yeah. they're the they're the most Horish band that I can stand, the rest I can stand. So yeah. because they're perfect mesh of like some thrash, extreme metal, and metal core shepherds, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I vibe with them. They're but they group. are yeah. they are at the they are the crossroad that I'm not crossing anymore after uh, this. Uh, yeah. What There's... is progressive about Lamb of God? You want to know Nothing. what's you know what's, yeah, they don't have a keyboard. Agree. They have never done a long song. They don't have nope. clean vocals. There's they don't have they don't have a mellotron. They don't have a saxophone. They don't. If have you want something even anything. more, they're Pantera taking a more melodic approach. Pan it's Pantera with better musicians. I'll tell yeah. you this right now, and this was this one. This one blew my mind because, at least with both of those ones, I can kind of see because they're all technical musicians. They do play in some odd times at least. However, really? the one that people were saying was uh, there was a few that I was just like you you y'all are psychotic. Attila. <laughs> No, so, they're trolling. If they're saying Attila so, is prog, they're trolling. No, I they talked to them. I talked to them. I talked to them. They insisted that I'm gonna be there honest. was prog elements that in Attila. That probably slow. Super, that, I, that's what I was thinking. They're probably a little <laughs> slow if they think Attila is prog. Yeah. Lambo God. On. Here's another thing, though, guys. Lambo God suffers from the same issue that Tool suffers. Which one is it? Um, the drummer being the best member. 
I guess, maybe. That and always drop D. Always drop D, yeah. Always drop D. Well, I, I think they've had a few drop C and D uh, B, uh, songs well, here and there. Always yeah. drop. Always, it's always drop, drop though, yeah. But then like, again, drop, I mean, drop, if we're going to say somebody, that. When somebody plays drop, when somebody plays drop, you just, tell, you just know how to riff. You don't even know how to solo. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Um, you don't know chords, really. All you know is power chords. <laughs> yeah. Another one, uh, Ryan, I think you have a few. I think I'm done with all mine. I think there was a few others. I think, Thiago, you've got some. Right? Mastodon. Well, you did talk about Vents. Oh, Mastodon. I think, but the thing thing with Mastodon Mastodon, is is the same thing as Gojira. We're going to rehash the same points. Yeah, Mastodon does the same shit. But Um, I I think they have more dynamics than Gojira. I think they're closer to Prague. And I think I could even say that Crack the Sky is a maybe a prog album yeah i yeah. can understand that that i can agree with Ma- the crack the sky is pretty but overall great. as a I band they, they have not been consistently progressive which isn't a problem they're just not progressive oh another one that people have been saying and i and i know that and i think that these the, that some of some people are comparing them to opeth a little bit oh no i think i know who you're talking about you think so who is it who is it Behemoth. Oh, I knew it. Uh, no. Yeah, I know. You know, we're going to rehash the same points. There's nothing, nothing progressive has ever been done by Behemoth. I think they're a, they're a decent band. Probably one of the better black and death <laughs> they're, bands. They're a great band, but Ooh. they ain't pro. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I can't stand black metal. I cannot stand black metal either. I think I the so only- stupid. It's so cringy. It's so like, Daddy, look at me. My my parents abused me. Yeah, exactly. That's one thing that I, I hate, like. About... I hate God because just because I hate God because He let me be abused. I'm like, I, I'm like, I get Trouble you. picking. No hate of property. Right. I understand no that. hate towards you if you're abusing your wife. Everybody got some bullshit they went through. It's not a commentary on you. Black metal song. Talking about how you take it out. I think that the <laughs> thing is, is that <laughs> all chromatic. Chromatic. That was kind of chromatic, a little bit. Um, <laughs> if I'm gonna point this out, though, at least Bohe- at least Behemoth is uh they don't they're not they they don't have a typical black metal lyrics. They they uh they have their interesting subjects here and there. From what I from what I'm gathering is that almost every time a metal band does something cool, people try to pin it as progressive because these bands that, yeah, that you brought up, they're all good. They're probably like the topper echelon of metal. Yeah, of course. Near the upper echelons. Of that at genre. least I did. I, I could have brought up a mirror. Oh my god. <laughs> or the Acacia strain. Oh my god. Pe- imagine people try to say, like, the Black Dahlia murders or Prague. Like, no. I've seen that Please, too. Trust me, it's coming. Uh-huh. I've seen Don't that too. Yes, the same right. person. Directly, directly. It's just. Please stop calling every metal band Prague. I for completely the agree. Sake. I know. For our sake. I know why they do that. I don't know doing why. Doing a, a long sick, song, but doing it okay, on time doesn't make you prompt. Yeah. Right. Let's be honest, though. I blame the old timers for that crap too, because you go to progressive rock group or whatever, anything is prog for them now. Queen is prog for them. Queen Which is prog for them. I think Queen they too. They started borders on prog. Booms. Yeah. Um, Beatles if, are prog for them. I'll I'll go ahead and say this. If I'm actually going to go ahead and point out one deathcore band that actually is progressive, I'm going to go ahead and say Born of Osiris. Yeah. I think yeah. mostly because yeah. of Richardson, what he did with that which band. Is, oh, which is a Richardson play with it. Yeah. But their he just got his stuff, royalties with that band. Their newest that stuff is band. very progressive. I, act, I, actually, I hear the progressive elements, and I hear that they actually try these more progressive uh, statements. They have clean vocals. They have their keyboard player. They have amazing instrumentation. They are they're more prog than all of these other bands combined. All right, and I think that's a good pin to the subject. Let's. Uh, what do you guys want to do for the last segment? I think we should talk just about just general non-prog music recommendations. Wait, what? General non-prog music re- recommendations. Okay, you guys can start. I'm gonna grab another bottle of water. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Me start. Yeah, go ahead. Um. One of my favorite things that I've been listening to lately has been the Bach Brandenburg Concertos, the complete works. 
yeah. uh, has really captured me. I had to do something for school <laughs> for, uh, for a music class, but I really fell in love with the Brandenburg Concerto. So I'm going to put them down in the link in the description uh, because they're a very cool piece. And I think any fan of progressive music would actually be down to listen to them. Yeah. You know, Bach was a genius. Bach influenced a lot of progressive music and a lot of music in general. Yeah, of course. Well, what would you say, Zoltan? Um, Just general non-prog recommendations. Yeah, we'll do this for a few mu- for, for a few minutes, and then we'll go ahead and just do uh, the last uh, thirty minutes. is just free reign. Thirty minutes. Yeah, we got to fill this We've up. Gone a bit. long enough. Oh no. Um, How long are we running? Uh, an hour and an hour and a half. Oh damn! All right, All right. we got to finish. We so, gotta... so I mentioned the brand new The right. complete works of Rimsky Korsakov. You guys are into that dark. Uh, oh yeah. Music, yeah, yeah. Uh, John Williams, he's a movie oh, score yeah. guy. Yeah, uh, in Star Wars, um, Jurassic Park, exactly. Jones, all the classes. Ludovico Ludovico Inaldi, which is an Italian composer. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Okay, guy that he has a lot Let of dark stuff. More. Go ahead. Do a more. Um, Ravel, the complete works of Maurice yes. Ravel, one of my favorite composers. Uh, the Rite of Spring by Stravinsky. Great yeah. piece of music. Influenced yeah. guys like Frank Zappa by like uh, King Crimson. Yeah. Um, Paco de Lucia, Concierto yes. de Aran yes. I think that's how you pronounce it. Another one of my favorites. The Beatles catalog, Revolver, Sgt. Pepper. I think anybody can appreciate that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead Still and say this. I'm going to go ahead and say this. I actually think that um, um, Sgt. Pepper's is a proto-prog album. Oh yeah, it's definitely proto prog. Um, I'll say this: if I'm going to point out something that's uh, not prog and recommendations, go ahead and listen to some uh, Pat Metheny Group albums. Yes, I, I forgot that. about Pat Metheny Group. Pat Metheny well, Group, Lyle Pat- Mays Pat- albums. Right, I'd say that Pat Metheny's still like around the vicinity of prog because yeah, I think most he plays prog jazz is. fusion and jazz yeah. fusion just the, the opposite spectrum of progressive rock. All right, I'll go ahead. And, and I think a lot well, of our right. fans, they do. I was going to say West Montgomery. Fusion. If you want to understand Pat Metheny, listen to West Montgomery. Oh, uh, Joe Pass, too. Another Joe Pass. Um, yeah. Another one that I'll go ahead and say. Um, I actually love a Let's lot of... link all of these, by the way. I, I love, I love um, a lot of Bill Evans' work. I, I love Bill Evans. He's great. Yes. I love a lot of his work. His, he's a phenomenal keyboard player, and I think he inspired a lot of jazz musicians even of, of today, for, for, such as my father. You can, I, I bet you guys can hear a little bit of Bill Evans' influence in my dad's playing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, but, what, do you guys, what do you guys think of singers, of the best singers that you guys enjoy listening to? Oh. Uh, um, what? Some frog bands that, that singers you guys enjoy listening to. I oh, wow. am a huge fan of Freddie Mercury. Which yes, a lot of yes, people same are. Here. But I, I think when people think of that band, they think of the, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, they think of the hits. But I think, yeah. you know, progressive fans, they'll find a lot to like in some of their older material, like Queen 2, yeah. Sheer Queen Heart two, Attack, yeah. the whole uh, Night at the Opera album. They, um, they, uh, uh, news of the like Day. There. News of the Day, even. Yeah. News of the World, right? Yeah, yeah. sorry, News of the World. That's right. My bad. Um, Day of the Rain. All those albums and uh, Innuendo. Yeah. Their final oh, yeah. Album, Progressive fans will find a lot to like in of that course, music. Of course, Great of course. Great vocals, amazing guitar playing by Brian. Of course, of course. Well, completely agree. Well, one, one, one singer that I don't think he's that great, but he does have nice composition, in my opinion. Not all of them. Oh. More to the pop rock kind of thing, which is thing. But I like the more like sad, melancholic songs that he makes, right? The police? He's not a great singer. Huh? The Police? Not the police, but Sting himself. Sting himself. I, I, I Pol- love poli- the, the police. is more like upbeat rock, pop rock, right? That's they're they're like ska. New. They're ska. Yeah, like a ska new wave. New wave. Yeah. Now, now you know, Sting by himself, he does more the melancholic, more um, sad Right. Yeah. That I can do it. Like yeah. uh, the shape of my heart. You know, fields yeah. of gold. Yeah. If you enjoy that kind of stuff, it's nice harmonies and the the. Yeah. The instruments now singers that are crazy that you can say oh my god that feels people sing i would go for like some symphonic metal like nightwish epica yeah those are great 
that's have beautiful voices out of this world. Um, um, yeah. You know, I mean, if you want to hear this, so the vocals, I don't know about instrumentation, uh, instrumentation yeah. but the vocals. Uh, now, man, I mean, I listen to a lot of like classical Spanish and Italian music, like Pavarotti, um, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, definitely. Bocelli. There are, yeah, Bocelli, Pavarotti, Placido yeah. Domingo, all oh, the yeah, tenor, of course. all the classical the, 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 the real treat the Yeah, of course. I even like, listen to Julio Iglesias, my man. I like yeah, love yeah. this stuff. Yeah. I can, I can, I can sort of agree yeah. with that. That yeah. man, my God, like, dude, if you're not a chick, dude, you got to listen. I understand a man turning gay for that dude, just by saying. Um, I'll go ahead and um, if if we're gonna bring up uh, female singers, I've um, in recent years, I've come to completely and utterly love two bands that are completely different, but I love their vocalists. I I am a huge fan of the Cranberries. Always been a yes. huge fan of the Cranberries, and I'm a huge fan of the Carpenters. I've always loved the Carpenters' music. Their Christmas carols are fantastic, and I love putting them on and listening to them at Christmas. And it's a great. I do like Heart as well. And the Cranberries are fantastic. What was that girl that sings so hard? I forgot the name. I keep forgetting the vocal is so hard. Oh, uh, Ann Wilson, right? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Um, yeah. there's a nice aggressive voice. Yeah, for real. I'll, I'll. I mean, we could go on all day about that kind of okay. stuff. I but think there's very nice little circles now. There's just recommendations that I got. Yeah, but they were recommendations. They were just albums that I heard because of uh, interviews from two progressive artists. So yeah. Michael Ackerfeld mentioned this artist named Scott Walker, not to be yes. with the uh, United States politician. <laughs> The conservative Scott Walker. This is a, a British singer from the '60s who released this record, Scott Walker Three, yeah. uh, which I consider to be his masterpiece. He has this very deep voice, kind of like a Sinatra, but it, it's this yeah. like orchestral pop with like psychedelic leanings. It's it's a very weird record, but if you're into you know, if you're into stuff like Sinatra, but also like progressive yeah. music, yeah. Uh, like the Beatles or even Elton John. He does this weird fusion. He's very unique. And another mm-hmm. band is a band called Jellyfish, which Mike Portnoy covered one of their songs for the Prague at Home concert. And they're not a prog band. They're like a power pop, Beatles, ELO kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. But not prog ELO, more like the telephone line ELO, which is, I actually prefer. Um, yeah. But this same. band is, is amazing. They yeah. they were like a 90s band, but they channeled all these very retro stylings of bands like the Beach Boys and the Beatles and ELO and Queen, and they yeah. combined it. And they were, you know, great yeah. melodic music. I think their second album called Split Milk, <laughs> definitely worth checking out. Um, speaking of which, if we're going to talk about the Beach Boys, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, my favorite albums have been uh, Pet Sounds. And um, uh, Surf's Up, those are amazing psychedelic pop rock records, and I love them. I'm going to listen to it probably tonight when we get off you know, this call. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah. Surf's Up, I've heard a lot of good things, but and I uh, loved Pet there's, Sounds. There's a lot of really good stuff that we could always talk about. Like, I think we've been actually tackling the more calm and relieving stuff, but I don't think we've actually tackled anything that's a little bit louder. For me, there's, an, there's a band that I've been listening to recently. Uh, a, a technical death metal band that I would consider to be the new version of old Opeth. It actually okay. is. It, it takes a lot of their elements, and I know that they've all, they've all claimed that they love Opeth. Um, Psychroptic. Psychroptic. I think you told me about. Yeah, you they're. Told us about. Yeah, they're uh, they're pretty good. They're um ve- the that guy in the lead vocalist. Holy crap! Can that man scream? He is probably one of the top screamers I've ever heard in my life. See, I mean, you mentioned that we didn't really mention all the heavy stuff. It's kind of because all the heavy stuff that I listen to is usually just prog. Yeah, yeah of course. Like, prog, yeah. like, like if I want to listen to heavy stuff, I'll put on some Opeth. Or maybe I'll put on, like, Train of Thought, Dream <laughs> Theater, some Vector by Haken. Like, yeah, of course, of course. That kind of stuff. Maybe some, even, like, well, I like Mastodon a little bit, so I might put yeah. them on. But I don't really listen to a lot of heavy, heavy stuff anymore. Yeah, um, I I would I mean for me if I was going to put on any other any other band that it would be considered progressive, 
progressive death metal or um, progressive metal in that sense. I would say that my favorite albums of these newer introductions would be um, Coma Ecliptic by uh, Between the Bear and Me. Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Coma Ecliptic and uh, I'd say the Parallax of the Hypersleep. One That's fantastic. Those two are great. I now, just... if, you, if, you, if you want to get more bluegrassy, more traditional prog meets like progressive or technical death metal, uh, The Great Misdirect as well. That one's good. Um, one that I sadly am not a huge fan of. It has its moments, but I'm not a huge, amazing fan of it. Colors. I love it. I'm not gonna lie. I to listened to it. And it didn't click with me. I've it talked about this at nauseum with you guys. How I listened to it, and it didn't really click with me. But I might not have been in the right mindset because I yeah, know that the album that really should, you know, appeal to me because I really liked stuff like the Contortionist and then Opeth. Yeah, I love the Contortionist. Yeah, yeah. So I need faceless. to give it another. Oh, I'm good. gonna say just one criminally underrated progressive album. Definitely, and a criminally underrated band would be Fate's Warning. Oh, I love Fate's Warning. They should be as big as Dream Theater. They should be, but they aren't. They, and they were I, produced by Terry Brown for a long time, weren't they? They were. They were. And they had Kevin Moore on keyboards. They started earlier than uh, than Dream Theater, but they did for some reason it never panned out. Their album Pleasant Shade of Grey is phenomenal. One of the best uh, yeah. progressive albums of all time. Probably in it's it's like in my top forty albums of all time too. It's great. Really I love that stuff. Um, oh. If you dig Dream Theater, if you dig Opeth, if you like grungier music, a little bit industrial leaning, but with that progressive side you'll really dig that album. Anyways, sure. uh, let's go into the free reign section where we just shoot the shit for the, for the last uh, 15 minutes and then we'll get to our plugs and then we'll end. I don't know. Do you guys have anything else to say? Um, I don't know. List I, more things that people should be listening to. Um, I've pretty much got nothing, but I feel like we could probably just freestyle this last 15 minutes and then do our plugs. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I'll go ahead and start okay, okay, something. Okay, okay. Can I start? Yeah, go ahead. The freestyle one of those is then. Yeah, okay. Ryan, you got your album that's going to come out at the end of the year, right? End of the year, yes. Yes. End it's of called year. Catatonic Daydreams by my band Moss Troopers yeah, coming out at the end of the year. Great. It's like a progressive, symphonic kind Can't of thing. It's, yeah, Definitely. it's... it's Hands Porcupine down. Tree influence, Dream Theater influence, Opeth influence, hey. Yes influence, a lot of everything we listen to in there. So if you like all that stuff, check it out. Yeah. Now, do you have any other side project except the one you were trying to have with us uh, after that? Well, you know, there's an inevitable solo record in the works. Yeah. Yes. Uh, which I'm going to do it on like, the more avant-garde side of what I like. More like the Zappa, you know, like the and fusing it with like the 20th century classical music and yeah like kind of like that fusiony miles davis eclectic period kind of thing just yeah. fusing a lot of different things because i want to i want to have moss troopers sort of like what's my bread and butter you know yeah my writing of course progressive music that really comes to you very naturally but i want to leave my solo music to just do anything just in, you know i don't want yeah. it to be even tied to a genre i want some songs like some of the songs i'm writing are like very latin influenced I love it. Love that idea. And then some of the songs I'm writing are leaning towards, you know, Arnold Schoenberg classical type music. So, you know, that's kind of what I want to do with that. I don't know when that's yeah. going to be released. Maybe 2021. Because we'll we, want to get, we want to get two albums out. Because Moss Troopers is all seniors. So we're about to, you know, it's our last year of high school, our last year together as a band probably, unless things get big. So we want to just get two albums out before we have to take a hiatus. Yeah. All right. And Zolt and you, uh, I know you have something with your dad, you're busy with your dad's band, producing well, it. Yeah. Um, uh, Ryan forgot to mention one that me and him have been involved with. Oh, uh, he, he a project we were trying to do, Tesla Experiment. which the Tesla Experiment. Which uh, we don't know when that's going to come Am out. Am I not a part of that? No, you're not. I, <laughs> I thought I was. Which one was I a part of? Zoltan? A, a different um, project. Tesla Experiment was something different I it was know. uh you me thiago and nick yeah we're all, all four of us are doing it's even stuff. Like, I mean, it's, it's see it's an entirely different keyboard player yeah but i don't know what's oh, gonna be going on with that yeah uh, because 
you know, I have two Moss Troopers records to write, a solo record. I'm down to do Tesla Experiment, but I don't know yeah. when I'll have the time in between records. Of course, of course, of course. Quarantine um, has given me a lot of time to do it, so. Oh, it's, yeah. It's I've already written so much. I've already written so much shit. This year has been literally just me sitting in my room writing, writing horror productions. <laughs> Well, it's like it's like I told your dad. Like I don't know if you guys when you do the next album. He said he's down for it. Yeah. I said, get Zoltan on the drums, man. Officially. Yeah, we that's already in the works. All right, yes. good. That's what I needed to hear. That's what I needed to hear. Um, speaking of which, uh, or Zoltan, whoever wants to go. Um, Benjamin's kite has been in the works for a long time. Uh, Ingenious Cacophonies, we started writing and, uh, well, we didn't write anything really new. We've uh, been working on this album for a year and a half, almost two years now. And it's going to be a long road ahead of us. We, we, we hope that we can get it out, um, very soon, but the most likely date is around the is around the uh, two year anniversary or a couple of year a couple of months after um, into the living and you've been two years two year anniversary. I think about worth like twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen and uh, almost right. August mid July. Um, so that's one of them. Hopefully, we can get that one out soon. But due to uh, COVID nineteen uh, reasons, it's going to be a little of bit of a. It's going to be a little yeah, bit Yeah, the Monster Rivers record would be out probably in a couple months had it not been for COVID-19. Of but course. now we're probably aiming to like November, even December. Could be even January 2020. I mean 2021, excuse yeah. me. Because, you know, we really need to get into a room together. Most of it's written. I would say like 80% of it's written. But yeah. We need to get into a room together and just jam out these songs and get them, you know, really arranged before we can go into a studio and record and play them yeah. live. Um, me and Thiago have been working on, uh, Brave Impact for a while now, and it's been, a, a very on and off kind of thing, but I've, uh, been doing some stuff in the background for that one, and I've, uh, written a few things for that, but it's gonna be a very, com- it's gonna be a very soft record, more space rock, nice kind of, well, soft rock oriented kind of, um, um, the Crosby, Stills and Nash like, kind of elements. What? It was also it's also gonna have like some Holdsworthy elements. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Um, of course, I've got my solo albums that I've uh, been working on. Uh, build about ba- uh, harmonious tones with build a basket case and uh, sleepy hollow, which are um, of course, amazing. Um, some of my I would say that that's probably some of my best writing that I've actually put into an album, and I've written so many amazing things with that and i'm just sitting there and i'm listening to what i've written and i'm just thinking wow i actually wrote this this is something that people would actually be very intrigued by that's a feeling i've had that's it's it's a, it's a great feeling when you write something and you're like i like I that know. i would i would seek that out and listen to it yeah um a few other ones that i've uh, been working on in the background hazmat was the more progressive metal uh death metal uh cross like an, another opeth kind of thing but with my own flavor and uh, a lot of my own styles rather than it just yep. being a clone that one's been an interesting kind of a adventure it's it's still not ready yet and there's only i would say half an album written for that one but that one keeps on going also can i add um, that's a great name i love the name hazmat you like that i like it i like it the one that i have most finished and this one is um, a huge project. This one's probably going to be the staple Kite Records album that we that I release uh, uh, under our label, Ryan. Um, yeah, we did like that. Um, Black Raven Affinity. That's one you've been talking about for a while. I know it's it's um it's very much of a drone ambient kind of tangerine dream kind of thing. It's probably the most spacey, most weird kind of uh trip music that you've her- ever heard i'm just <laughs> i'm i'm looking i'm sitting there thinking whoa holy crap people's ears will fall off if they hear this i i hope that's in a good way that's kind of how i feel oh, about yeah. this is my solo record you know yeah it's, it's, 
Yeah. We're going to be a little jarring to listen to. It's going to be one hell of an album. The Black Raven Affinity debut is I honestly think because I already have 3 albums planned out for that for that band for that uh, project. And uh-huh. so far, I would actually say that the first stuff that I've written for it is the strongest of the material that I've written for it. Okay. Um, oh, that's a statement. Yeah. That's a big statement. I would say that. Here uh, first, guys. The debut here. is. Here first. The debut is going to be the best album. The debut has unbelievable atmospheres that I've been experimenting with for a long time, and you're just sitting there thinking, "What am I listening to?" Like it m- bends your mind. Right. The is so bored. Holy crap! Ooh, I'm look. I'm, I'm I'm like thinking of how we're gonna find time to do all this. Get yeah, Zoltan, you have like eight projects. I have so many at? projects. <laughs> I got, listen, I F2, got basically. one album that is not finished since 2008 because things happen in life. Um, yeah. What's that under? Yeah, what name is that under? Yeah, well, oh, what so name? System, well, the name of the band is called Flow Within the Chaos. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. And oh, the yeah. name of the first album is supposed to be called System Failure, but that's still debatable. But it's, yeah. it is for now. Because it's very like we we the first concept we had is take that chaotic element of prog, yeah. But at the same time, we're gonna throw fusion like songs in there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Think like in terms of Charlie Hayden and Pat Metheny, uh, uh Zoltan. Yeah. Right. That kind of area. Yeah. Um, or, or parts of the song, but it's, it's supposed to be more like also the metal elements in there. Yeah, I think more like train of thought, uh, some images and words yeah. in terms of that, right? Um, then the second album, I mean, Josh came up with this idea of doing a concept album about a twist of fate type of version of King Arthur and the lore, Korean legend. Right. Like, sure, we can make it work. So we have written, I'd say, four songs for that as well. All right. Um, but it needs other parts. Uh, I think keys. We got some keys there. The drums, uh, we try to do his dad, but Zoltan also invited, of course. So, uh, you know, credit will do with credit do if you have time to like help us out with that. Oh, well, I would gladly help you guys out. Gladly. Hell yeah, with, with no regards to any time because, well, time is really? endless here where I am. Right. And also, time and also endless Ryan. in the land of coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> and also, Ryan. I don't know about Josh, but uh, I was going to talk to him about it. Uh, he wants to be in the podcast, by the way, guys. I don't know if you guys are open for that. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we would love to have him. We would love to have him. Awesome. Do, do some type of guitar harmonies, and I was thinking of you, Mike. I'd be honored. I'd, I'd love to do that. Really? Sweet. Um, so definitely, there you go. Uh-huh. Uh, the invitation's open, so we can all do that. And also, Ryan, um, I think eventually, this is what I had in mind, too, guys. If time permits us in the future, either it would be me, you, Zoltan, Nick, or whoever it is, or the bass player of your choice. And also thinking, Zoltan, of us doing an album with your dad. That Ooh. would be amazing if that would be have the chance to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think he would be very open to that idea. Imagine having two keyboard players doing it with Nick. Oh, That would dad. be very interesting. But I think the one keyboard player would probably be more practical. Yeah, my dad. I mean, yeah, he exactly. threw, he threw, I think he threw the invitation to us and one of the next, not this album, of course, but the next yeah. Benjamin. If I ever come up with one, I'll let you guys know because, you know, and to be honest, so then I'll, I'll like, I, 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 last time I talked to your dad, I said to him, I'm actually learning some of the, uh, entire movie need from these guitar lines. He's like, are you? He's like, I want to hear that after. <laughs> yeah. And the pop filters down. Congratulations, sir. Um, yeah, like I yeah. said, you you you're young. I I yeah. Of course. Okay. I think I think I I I mean I think we all have our uh, our things where we're all helping each other out, and I think we all have yeah. our experiments where we're just we're 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 all creative minds. We love the idea of creating. Yes, and sir. we will That's stop at we're... nothing. <laughs> Death will no. stop us from creating. Yeah, and look, I'm dragging on Nick's ass. Not Nick. I mean, uh, Ryan's ass was made of Canada there. Yeah, we're doing that. Okay. 
Shit. Hopefully when I'm up at uh, Berkeley. Yeah. Oh God! Here we go. There That's you go. The hope. That's the dream. Oh yeah. All right. I'll just hit. I'll just hit you over there, and we and we head up. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. sir. I mean, this is gonna be a this is a creative year for all of us, and I think that I think that'll so greatly affect us as uh, people when we really put this back. We listen to all the stuff that we created, and we just sit there thinking, "Wow, we are." creative minds who share interests and we just love the stuff that we do we're passionate about the music that we create and i think that that's something that we can all um hardcore appreciate from all of us that's true i totally agree with that sentiment and uh i think the camaraderie that we have found as well um i'd say for the last three to four months Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. at least for me, because that's how long I know you guys. Yeah. Being one of the most important things in my life. Hands down. I, I don't need to get into subjects, of course, but Zoltan knows this. I think you too, Ryan. I talked to you about it. Mm-hmm. But had it not been for this chance meeting, whatever you want to call it. I mean, my, 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 my friend Josh, of course, everybody has always helped me, but this thing brought me to another level as well of meeting you guys and being able to be so creative and share your creativity. You guys sharing that with me too, that uh, 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 it just made me a better person overall. Kind of Not as a musician, but as a person, as a person. Like, it brought me such a peace, especially what, Whatever can happen in my life, I don't need to say. Like you guys already know, but he, he did. It's given me a lot of peace as a person. It's it's transforming me a lot. You know what I mean? So I have nothing else to say, man. That you guys are probably the best people I've met in my life too. So <laughs> same to you, brother. Thanks. Um, same. I think that's probably a good note to end. Yeah. Um, Honestly. Yeah. It's up to you guys. Yeah, um, we got four, we got uh, three and a half more minutes, so why don't we just make this a round two hours? Yeah, I'll uh, say this. That was my closing statement. You guys say your closing statement. That was my closing statement. My closing, closing statement. statement is that Zoltan is a simp. I knew it was coming. <laughs> His favorite album is Simping England by the Pound. May I just say that? Um, we got to have a snap like uh, album call that. Um, Ryan's favorite uh, album of all time is uh, Metropolis Part 2, Simps from a Memory. <laughs> okay, that was a good one. Yeah. That was a good one. That was a good one. I'm not going to lie. You and, fired um, me. Uh, of course, uh, Ryan's favorite progressive rock album is uh, Close to the Simps. <laughs> that one wasn't that clever. Uh, that, well, no, Sim- the first <laughs> Simps from a Memory me is way better. I'm gonna have to say <laughs> that um, yeah, I had fun. This is this has been a good talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I'm always enjoy this. Thing. Yeah, don't be that guy. Who only don't be that fraud. Don't be that guy. <laughs> don't be that guy on the comment sections on Reddit who jerks off Dream Theater. Who's like. Dream Theater is the best music ever. Prague is superior to all forms of music. Just shut up. Just don't be that guy. <laughs> That's my closing statement. Don't be that guy. Listen to yeah. other forms of music. Be, Thank you. Yeah, you have to be more open-minded. You have to listen to more genres that are outside of your regular musical spectrum. For example, I tried listening to... I've tried for a couple of years to see what my mom and my uh, stepdad and my little sister are into when it comes to modern country and i can't get into oh, it no. i cannot stand modern country and i can't stand rap either but i do I like mean, though i'm gonna lie i do like folk music there's a uh, this I three love sisters folk music. That i follow yeah there's these three sisters that i follow her name the name of the staves yeah check them out excuse I'll, me check yeah. them out on youtube or instagram they are phenomenal i'll go ahead and say this i mean i'm a I huge can buy with some folk yeah, I, I'm I'm a huge fan of Gordon Lightfoot. He's a Canadian legend when it comes to folk. But I, I think that, that when it comes down to c- country, I would rather listen to a Beatles, uh, not a Beatles record, an Eagles record. I would rather sit down and listen to some Eagles and, uh, you know, some uh, Johnny Cash. I would rather listen to Johnny that. Cash. 
Allen Brothers. Oh, uh, I mean, the uh, Eagles. Um, the Eagles. Or even the if Eagles. we're thinking about country, like stuff like yeah, like you said, Johnny Cash, uh, Willie Nelson, John Denver. Oh, I can't. I can't stand Willie Nelson because one thing: how can you write a hundred? How can you write Don't almost two hundred records? How can you write two hundred records of three chord country? I know. Well, I, I say this: John He's Denver. Cool. Go ahead. He's a cool dude. That's all I'm gonna say. I respect. Yeah, yeah, true. I respect. Okay, John Denver. I vibe with John Denver. I vibe with um, what's the name of that other guy there? Um, James Taylor. Yeah, I do like James Taylor. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Carolina in my mind is one of my favorite songs. Also, I do like um, what's the name of that dude? I like a lot. Jesus, I just played his song the other day. Uh. Jesus that, that, he does the nine moves. Bob Seger. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's more classical rock for people. Of course. I like his song. Of course. Some boomer rock. So um I'll I'll go ahead and make my closing statement. Um I'll say mm-hmm. that I I really enjoyed um this. I think we all had a great time, yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think that when it comes down to it, I don't think I could ask for um, better friends than you guys. You guys are great friends, musical inspirations, and you guys help keep this uh, world together. Um, um, I'll go ahead and say. Uh, um, I'll also go ahead and say that Thiago's favorite album has to be "Pimping England" by the Pound. <laughs> Thiago, your closing statement. Hey, don't let the girls watch this. You don't know me here, this brother. Come on. <laughs> you, you're gonna, you're gonna put in the description there in the comment. Fast forward to this time so you're here to truth about Thiago. <laughs> no, no. I think that's that's as good a place as Report any. Report to Facebook, to YouTube, whatever you upload that up to. Oh my God. <laughs> that comment. Anyways, um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, please leave a like, share, and subscribe for another episode of Talking Prague. We will see you later. Bye.